so, so God, so, so God, so, so God, God is stack, God is stack, God is stack, good God, that's God. Welcome to Gotti Stacks. With Ben Simmons. What's on the menu, Benny boy? Welcome back. Great to have you here. Oh, week three of the NFL season is nearly upon us. And I thought, you know what? Why not get my good friends Samuel and Kimpo. That's, that's his new name. Used to be the Kimster, now it's Kimpo. Or uh, Kimpocrates, Kemperer, these are some of his other aliases, podcast, and uh, just talk some shit, you know, just just dig our heels in, die on some hills, have just have a have an all out brawl of a debate about none other than Marcus Mariota and the nasty, dirty, disgusting Tennessee Titans. Yeah, that, that's that's the hot topic in the NFL these days, the Tennessee Titans. But unbeknownst to, to Samuel and I, Kimpocrates, the Kimster, Kimpo, he has a, 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 a undying love for Mike Vrabel um, from the Patriots. Bill Belichick coaching tree. It's a, a passion undying. Um, I even think he would step in front of a, a, of a train to save Mike Frabel's life. Well, let's be honest. If he steps in front of a train, the train would kill them both. But, you know, in front of like a, a car or a, a car would kill them both as well. Hmm, let me think about this. Uh, he'd take a bullet for him, I think. The bullet might go through them both. I can't think of, uh, of a metaphor to use. But um, needless to say, he's in love with Mike Vrabel, and we touched a nerve, and uh, he argued passionately, we argued passionately, we argued with each other, we, we debated. Uh, this is a long podcast, so uh, you might as well, you know, put a sweater on, you know, make yourself a hot cup of joe or a hot cup of tea. I would suggest, you know, something with no caffeine. Actually, you know, you're going to need some caffeine because you might fall asleep if you don't. Eat some chocolate, some dark chocolate has a little caffeine in it. Get your butt pumping. You know, maybe smoke a joint, maybe drink a beer. Uh, do something because you'll fall asleep if you don't. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, it's spirited debate. We get into it. It was fun. Uh, good time. We kind of preview the um, the Baltimore Ravens, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Lamar Jackson versus Patty Mahomes. Um, is this uh, are these, these these two guys the next? You know Manning and Brady. Uh, probably not, but maybe this is a good chance. Um, but like we talk about, anything could happen. One could get hurt. But um, we talk about Mahomes' potential legacy. Oh, the Dolphins! How lowly they are. And of course, we lead with. Antonio Brown, the news that just hit. We look back at some of his stats. Is this is this it for him? I mean, I personally don't like the guy. Um, he's kind of a a jerk, to put it very lightly. Some might call him a fuckface. I don't know. Some might call him a piece of shit. He's a lot of things. But um, yeah, that's so. You know, we get into all that stuff. This this is again a marathon pod. Uh, I just ate some food, so we recorded the pod, I ate some food, I'm feeling, uh, I don't know, kind of tired, lethargic, um, ate some fish sticks, a lot of them too, um, my friend Gordo was talking about eating nuggets the other day, so I went and bought some fish sticks, because I was going to buy nuggets, and then I saw the fish sticks, and uh, I fell in love, and I was smitten, and you know, our love was consummated by me shoving them in my mouth really fast while I watch cartoons. So, you know, it's a classic American love story. Anyways, um, well, I hope you're having a great night. I hope you're having a great morning. Whenever you're listening to this, thanks for listening. Hey, hey, thanks. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, thank you. Thank you. All right? Enjoy. Or not. But have a good listen. Uh, bye-bye.
Kemp is listening to a podcast at 1.5 speed. Um, this is what he does. He listens to podcasts super fast. I have no clue how he can disseminate the information, but he listens to them at like two times speed. What's up? Speed. What's up? Can you hear me? What's up? Yeah, man. What's going on? Nice. Nice. No, to listen to this. You you I like this you sound to, now? Does it sound better? Yeah, it does. It sounds good, man. Yeah. Nice. You were listening to a podcast at like uh, twenty at times double speed, man. I got a double speed. speed. Got to get through. Got a lot of podcasts. Got got a. I'm like so you're, I'm like you're, Neo in the Matrix. <laughs> just like I was I was gonna say, you, you just like plug in info, a little. Just coming on in. You plug you plug the cord into the back of your head and you yeah. just consume all the this, content. This, this is why this is why I have like a eleven game losing streak. It's totally oh. not related to that. It's totally not related. No, no, no. It's who has a, who has an eleven game losing streak? Oh, god damn it! It's not Jermaine. Come on, let's keep going. Let's just keep going. That's just the first thing I, I came in and I heard eleven game losing streak. Yeah, we we're just talking yeah, about hypotheticals. Would it, could anybody could anybody lose that many in a row in this league? I mean, we have a pretty high standard in our league. Yeah, I just don't feel um, like I've ever heard of that. Well, you know, it's kind of yin and yang. You know, I got the yeah. most losses maybe, yeah, but, but I also you know, have the most wins consecutively. So I would that shut you... that mouth. All right. <laughs> all right. I've got fifteen, when you lose, 15 when in, you a lose 11 in a row, in a row. kid. Well, if you lose 11 you in a row, it's, it's not really yin and yang. It's more just like yin and, yin yin. and then yin again and then yin and like a lot of yin. Like a lot of <laughs> yin losing, is the good right? one, right? That's the good side. That's the light. <laughs> Chris, well, I'm not that spiritual. I, I can't tell you exactly. Yeah, yin is good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I do have a lot of good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I so mean, then a lot of yang. Kimster, you you've had some great seasons. There's no there's no denying that. Classics, um, classics. I mean, it's the beginning of the it's the beginning of the fantasy season. You can't write yourself off. No, no, I can't. No, I mean, I mean, you told me to start Tennessee defense. I did, and they got me one point last night. So <laughs> did not tell I you mean, to do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a, a, a little tale. Um, 2014. All right, uh, that's when I started my longest streak ever. Uh, a winning streak. I lost the first two games that week, guys. <laughs> I lost the first two games. I started 0-2 that season and then rattled off, what, 14 straight or something, whatever the number is. And mm. kept, that's why I'm at right now. I'm looking at my squad, and I'm like, all right, this squad is not bad. Like, it's a good squad. I don't know – what more moves I can make right now. I'm content with it. I think if they can all fire, they're all just getting their groove back. I'm glued had, to my bed Lenny, in my seat by this story. Yeah, yeah Lenny, Lenny Fournette last night, who uh, was mm. – <laughs> he had 12 rushes for negative three yards, and then he he had that 69-yard run. He yeah. um, got him to 66 yards total. So I, I saw, I saw, a, twi- awesome. I, I saw a tweet that was like – here is uh, Fournette's carries for yards he made. Like it's negative five, negative three, negative two, negative three, zero, zero, I zero, 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 zero yeah. two, 69. three, sixty-six. You know, and it's just sixty-six. Yeah. So, somehow he was able to, um, you know, still get me fifteen points, which was crazy considering how shitty of a game he had. Oh yeah, that was a, that was a huge save. Yeah, fifty. It really was. Saw, it really was. It. I mean, he was. He was remember negative points. The old footage. I'm thinking from like last decade or the '90s, where like they would show players training at training camp with no pads, but especially like receivers, they'd have like a parachute on the back, and they'd just be running as fast as they could with the parachute on the back. Remember <laughs> yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like what Fournette was looked like on most of those runs. It was like he was <laughs> running. And he immediately was just being weighed down by some kind of. He looked bad, invisible. man. He looked bad. Like running in a pool or running in pudding or yeah. something. Yeah. He yeah. Does, his, I mean, his, the <laughs> offensive line pudding. doesn't. I like that. The offensive hey, line man. doesn't do him any favors, but uh, uh, he like he's just got no. 
like he's got no uniqueness to him. Like he's just like sh- straight line pound. And he touched the ball twenty one times though. He does get a lot of volume. Yeah, damn sure. You guys so, ready for my uh, my DJ Chark comparison real fast? Yeah, yeah. Go, no, let go me on. Hear. And I have to I have to pour one out because this is an RIP. But that guy reminds me of Chris Henry. Oh man. Wait, who is it? Oh, uh, Chark. A pretty yeah. good comp. Yeah. 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 He's six four. He's got, I mean, super quick. He's four three speed. Yep. Chris Henry. Yeah, similar. For sure. I don't know, man. Chris Henry was never the um, number one in, in, in Cincinnati, man. Kemp, why didn't you yeah. why didn't you put a bid in for Shark? I told you to do it, and you said you were going to. What happened? He only went for ten bucks. Uh, I, I, I did didn't want. I, I, don't, I, I I do not trust uh, Jacksonville Jacksonville's offense. I don't. But either. after after last night, Gardner Gardner Minshew, I love this guy. This guy is awesome. He's from Mississippi. So props to Mississippi, getting that good, uh, good NFL went, He talent. just went down in my book. No, know. hey man, uh, got that nice stash. Gotta love him. He's such a personality. I think if he, um, if he, if it weren't for the fact that he was in fucking Jacksonville, like I think I this guy would, yeah. this guy yeah. would be a star in the making. He's getting like two hundred passing yards a game, roughly. I mean, he, he it, it could go up for sure. He could get more than that, but Watch, yeah, this, their this, offense doesn't support a lot of. Receiving numbers there. Now imagine, check it. Imagine, think if that team, if Jacksonville goes to London, if they move to London, like Gardner Minshew is going to be a stud over there. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna get. You mean like off think, the field? I don't think they're gonna move to London. I don't know, man. Shad Khan. Um, Good I mate. Shad Khan bought like Wembley Stadium. Oi, oi, Gardner Mitchell, we love him. We love Gardner Mitchell. <laughs> Gardner Mitchell. I need some lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. Oi, oi, what's oh, you saying about Gardner Mitchell? I don't want to hear. Oi, Jigs. Oi. Jigs all day. Jigs, I'm straight Jigs. <laughs> Jags. Oh my goodness! With that, I can't believe I Jackson watched. Jacksonville like, to London would be like a crazy cultural whiplash. Yeah, you put them yeah. in the AFC East, and if you put them in the AFC East, and you have you you kick the Dolphins to the south, and then so then you would have five, t- four teams. So they would be Wait. part of the AFC East. You told me okay. to cut you All off. Right. You told me to, to make you stop, but I want. I, I kind of want to see where this goes. Keep going. All right, I'll tell you. So you got I, I've got it all planned out and the like. So you what you do, okay, is now, now you're going more nor, you're going more northern. I wanna see I think you're gonna you're gonna morph you, you, into like a Boston accent. Bollocks I am. You you go you put them in the A you put them in the AFC East love, okay? And then what you love. do look, you, what you do is you um Put them in the AFC East. <laughs> okay, okay, we know. You know, you, you know what the best. And that way they play. They play each game. other. They play each other like yeah, six yeah. times, and they, like they're going to they're going AFC six East. hours. The, the, they'd the be they'd of... be playing. I think they the flight from Boston to London is six hours. I think I'm not going <gasps> to check that. I'm not fact checking that. You know what that the, is you know about the best part hours. of uh, of them moving to London would be is that they would become. <laughs> They would become the Jaguars. Oh, that would Jaguars. be great. Jaguars. Jaguars. The way they say Jaguars. Jaguars. I, I, I will the say. The Jaguars I, have, a, they have a mass clash on their hands. They've got the Titans in town this weekend. Yes, yeah, it's I mean, huge it, AFC yeah, has The British matchup. play-by-play guy would be would be the worth the price of. It's massive. Of, uh, oh, it was a huge touchdown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, uh, um... James O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> Didn't he get some calls last night? I think he got a couple of Yeah, he got a touchdown. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, no, I but uh, I, I I like uh, what I've seen. But they're Minchu they're before. they're going to be playing. They're going to be playing. Yeah, I believe I six too. games. They're going to be playing six games in London. Okay, the Jaguars. Jack to London is not happening. They can make it happen. And you, what you it. do, you what you do is you peg, 
Logistically, the, um, it makes so little sense. Oh, it would be so much fun, though. Well, I think it Florida could happen, be, man. Jacksonville might be underwater in, like, 50 years, so they probably That's will true. have to go to London. They would be so, forced we'll, to move. We'll go That's somewhere true. else. Yeah. Well, maybe, <laughs> so maybe, it's a, maybe 100 years. In, in 2069. <laughs> uh, oh, God, the man, true Hall of Famer. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yep. he he could be. I don't know. It's not London, too, it's that one's too early. Jaguars, like, London, the London Jaguars versus the, the Liverpool Jaguars. Patriots. I will say so I've, been trying, to, I've been trying to I've been trying to um hone on my on my British accent. So instead of like advertisement, I say advertisement. Yeah, that's or good. vitamins. Vitamins instead of vitamins, vitamins. Yeah. Schedule. Yeah. Let's check on the Jaguars schedule. schedule. Say whilst instead of while. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, sound do you know what though? I think, oh, do you know what though? I don't think that your your accent is that good. But if I got to be honest, it's a bit, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit awkward. I think. But awkward. Um, awkward. You're getting there. <laughs> all right, but but you you you'll get there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so I really I really want to do uh, my, I anyways. really I really want to do my job speaking in a British cut, accent. Cut, you should just do it. Just do it. I yeah. should. I should knock on door. Knock, knock on door. And go, oh. I I only speak in a British accent around my niece. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, since she's been like you know one year old, so I'm, I'm trying to get her. I'm trying to have it rub off on her. You know? I I, tr- I tried. I tried with uh, Hudson. I I tried. I s- spoke Brit- British for as yeah, long you, as I could. Uh, yeah, the kid, did, the kid did, having did, a British did, accent would be hilarious. Stick. Oh, you yeah, guys from the, you guys from the of... UK? No, no, I just talked in a British accent his entire life. <laughs> no, so no, no, I'm from, I'm no, from I Ohio. just talk like I I just talk like this. <laughs> For about That's, ten years, it's gonna sound insane. Oh man, you won't so. have a British accent; it'll just sound sound like a crazy person. So, Antonio way, Brown. I, I want to I want to get your I want to get your thoughts on Antonio Brown. Uh, let's just get right into it because I, I really want to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so I, I think I think before we start, before we start though, you you we are on, you're on record as saying that you originally didn't want him to come to to the Patriots. But then when no, he did, I, I, I you accepted think... him with open arms, and you were excited. You said, "I was the excited. Pie, the pie is big enough for everyone. Everyone's going to eat. This makes them a Super Bowl favorite. They're going to go sixteen and zero. So go ahead and uh, what, what do you? What's your take now? I'm curious. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I so I didn't know it was possible to be so fucking stupid the way Antonio Brown has been stupid. I know it's like Donald Trump, where everything you he does, you say, "Jesus Christ, it can't be any dumber than this, right? This is rock bottom." And then Trump does something dumber the next week. Same thing with Antonio Brown. And each time you don't believe it, mm-hmm. like that's the same thing with Antonio Brown here. He does something, you're like, "Jesus, he can't be any dumber than this, right?" It, it's mm-hmm. got to only get better from here. So you you go in with thinking positive, but then when this shit happens, you're just like fuck it, man. He they he was at that deadline uh, to pay him five million came, and I think this was their time to to just let go. And I think there were, I think there were clauses. They they were definitely clauses, and whatever contract they signed that they gave to uh, Antonio Brown, there were clauses in there. That gave them an ability to to get out of whatever contract they signed. Guarantee you, they they were making sure their butts were covered. Mm, covered butts. So I, yeah. I, so, uh, um, they're they're going to be they're going to be looking for that contract. I mean, I think this. Uh, you know, I, I didn't want him to begin with. So, and I it it, it you do feel duplicitous having to cheer for this kind of person because you don't want to. Well, you, you've had a lot of experience. You've had a lot of experience with Tom Brady. And Tom God Brady. Damn it, yeah. so I was going to say, don't, don't act like you haven't cheered people like this before. No, yeah, man. I mean, you, is, you may, you, you've been, you've been sleeping in this bed uh, for a long time. So you know exactly I, I, what you're talking about. I just about, got right? my cherry popped. I got my cherry popped. No, oh, come on. You, you, you're like yeah. equivalent of like a, a dime no, store. I've never, I mean, no, I'm, I've never, I, my morality, my ver- ethics demand that I do not cheer 
for, for people like that. And yet here I am on Sunday cheering for guys like that. It was so strange. You loved it. You were giddy. You couldn't wait. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty. Yeah, you were so fun. you good, were so excited. And, uh, ex- you loved it. You were into it. I kind of wanted more. You wish right, you man, were still I, on the I team. did. I did kind of want more, man. I, I did kind of want more because, um, I you know I it, you can't help but to look at that team, which is already has the best defense in football. Yeah. They're, they're dominant. Well, man. well they, they are really good. Yeah, it's true. They're, they're, they are they're dominant. The and now, and then they they dismantled the Steelers by thirty points without AB, and then you put AB into it, and you're like, Jesus! They're like, Wow, what? Where's the limit for this sort of team? You know, you, now you're starting to talk on 2007's level. Are they that good? So, and that that was. Uh, yeah, that that was kind of fun to do to think about. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and answer that. Shower. No, no, they're not that good. Oh. I mean, I think I think they could with with a B on the team. I think they had a chance. I think that was yeah. in the conversation. I don't think they need a B. By the way, I, I don't do think they do either. When, but I'm just saying, Lamar like Jackson. Go on. Yes, go ahead. No, uh, I, I just, I'm just. <laughs> Wow, are you go? go. You just go. You just go. All right. Hey, hey, who? Samuel, go. When Lamar Jackson tears apart Miami's defense, oh well, you know it's Miami, and uh, you know Tom Brady didn't exactly tear apart that defense. I mean, he did fine, but nobody's like, well, why didn't he do what Lamar did? So Lamar gets sort of qualified praise, and with Tom Brady, it's efficient. Oh, he's just engineering these drives. See, I'm not. I just think I'm it's not, funny though. No, who, who's saying this? I'm I, not I, saying. I've heard, oh, I saw, I've heard I nothing saw, but I praise for Lamar. I've heard nothing but praise. No, for Lamar. I, I saw. I saw quite a bit of praise with the caveat. Yeah, but what happens when he plays a real team? By the not way, I don't necessarily think. Not I don't for me. necessarily what, think. What is, what, we can, hold, I, can, hold, I, can I please hold on a second? Finish? Hold on. I, well, I just want to—I want to interject something really fast. Um, okay. Kemp, you, you did say to me when I we were talking about Lamar, you did say it was against Miami. You did say that. You 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 did, and so then, so then I. But it was against Miami. So, then, so there is that cabinet. I, I know, but you but you kind of scoffed. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's good. I said you did really good, and then I said I said I can't believe we didn't talk about him. No, you scoffed, and then when we talked about Brady, I said I I said your line back to you. Well, saying that I, I, the point, you remember the that? point is you remember that? Lamar, no, the, Lamar is showing himself to be an excellent uh, young quarterback. I think um, he's got a, a good offensive line. He's in a good situation. I think he is throwing the ball a tad bit better as far as accuracy goes. But a tad? He already has more touchdown passes than he did in 11 games last year. He's throwing the ball a lot more. He has seven touchdowns. He had, uh, I think, he had six. He had six all last year. No, dude, you, all Five last year, Miami, were, like they they had designed runs for, like the whole offense was basically designed runs for um, Lamar Jackson once he got in. Because his, his points last year were all on his leg. I, I know I had him on my fantasy team. I, I remember, but I'm just saying that like but they haven't installed an offense for him. I mean, that's why John Brown was there and doesn't doesn't catch shit with them. Go goes to Buffalo of all places and is a stud. I'm stud. Yeah, I, I, I know that. I, I, I exaggerate when I say yeah, stud, that, that was a little good. bit of an exaggeration. But he's he's playing well. John Brown is. But Samuel, continue what you were going to say. Well, no, I guess my point is that like I don't. I'm not calling out Kemp for this, but I just saw people in the media say that, where it was like, well, let's kind of tamper down our praise. And I think there's something to that, right? Because Miami well, is Kemp, well, Kemp's in the media. terrible. Kemp is in the yeah, media. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> this is true. I, I do but have like, a... Miami, Miami, Miami is a historically bad team. That being yeah. said, Story if we're going to watch sure. someone like Tom Brady, who is a first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback, go in and not do the same thing, to Miami that Lamar did, I think Lamar at least gets a little more credit than some of those people were offering, even if it is a bad team. Does that make sense? No, well, but the point is, is that Tom Brady has done this 
this is what year nineteen. Yeah, but that's of not him, the point. Of I'm him saying. that's no beating you're up not listening on, to on what Miami. I'm saying. Like it, actually, it, it, they beat they beat beating him plenty in Miami, haven't they? <laughs> Doesn't he have a losing record still? Well, I said I Miami? said beating they, they Miami. I, I said beating Miami. I didn't I didn't specify at where. Okay. Um, my only point, my only point was that Lamar got qualified praise, and then when someone with the reputation of Brady goes out the next week and puts up a stat line that's not anywhere near what Lamar did, I think it's worth revisiting the fact that it's not just about Miami being terrible. It's about Lamar, Lamar being really good. That's my only point. You know, Sam, he you, didn't like and Lamar. You've, you and your virtue signaling, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> what? I, what? I want you to realize that we have given Lamar Jackson his due praise. It was in Miami. We haven't seen this guy actually run an offense but for a couple weeks. I mean, oh, for real air air and uh, land ground offense, the whole package. Like, last year was all designed runs for him. A land-based offense. Not all designed runs. I mean, he actually played pretty ground well in the based. playoffs. Honestly, he, he struggled in the first part of that game, but then he, he came back. He had two touchdown passes. I mean, he had a lot of fumbles, but – I'm not um, sure. I'm not sure what the virtue signaling is you're talking about. I, I don't understand it either, honestly. I, I give him credit for what he's doing, and I think it should just be that, you know, because the NFL, even on a team like Miami, it's really hard to make it look as easy as Lamar made it. That's my only point. Now, moving past that for a second, I would say, if I could get back to Brown for a second, with I, inferior I kind of weapons out. too, with inferior weapons. Yes, exactly. I, I zoned out with Antonio Brown, with Kim talking about Antonio Brown there. But I will point this back to we had a conversation, um, I don't know if you guys remember, last year where we were looking on pro football reference and we were kind of, you know, mouths, mouths agape at Antonio Brown's like five or seven year run with Pittsburgh. And we were talking about, do you guys remember this conversation? We were talking about whether he had a path to becoming yeah. not not Jerry uh, Rice. Probably not not Rice, but but second behind Jerry Rice, right? And it's just amazing to me how quickly this is all just spiraled. And you know, I don't want to get into I mean, we're not here on this particular platform to talk about all this off the field shit that seems pretty gross. But just the way that his star has kind of fallen in the last year to where now it's like you have to think of his career as both. There's no question. He's the best receiver of this decade. Like no question about it. Yeah. He's the receiver of this decade. And yeah, yet, he's, yeah. the, the second part of that sentence, if you're writing his football obituary, so to speak, has to be something about how these last like six or eight months have gone. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at his stats right now. From two, to, he's basically Dude, he been was dominant. Who, who he is? Hold on a second, Kemp. Sorry, Jesus Christ. 2010 to 2019. That's like that's that's the whole stretch. So he's basically been playing throughout the whole decade. And from 2013 to 2018, he had uh, 100 or more catches. It's insane. Every single one of those years. And no less than uh, 1,250 receiving yards. And he had uh, over 10 touchdowns in all but one of those years. That's just like a crazy stretch. My God. Anyways, go ahead, Kim. No, I was going to ask what, based on his record right now, do you guys think that he is a lock for the Hall of Fame? I mean, he should be. I mean, but if, uh, I, I think yeah. I think he, I think he should be, but the way this has all gone down, I like how he's just gone mental. I think if T.O. got in, like twelve months, T. Go, if T.O. got in eventually, I think he's going to. <laughs> I was going to say yeah. if if T.O. did Harrison it for longer in, though, T.O. did it for. <laughs> no, but seriously, if Marvin Harrison got in with all the stuff that's swirling around him, I think Brown probably does get in, but it's like. It's just like you can't possibly look at his career the same way you looked at it a year ago. Yeah. 
God. See, but I, I think at the end of the day, he's going to have – somebody is going to sign him because it's not like he's without talent. If, if you got NFL teams wanting to invest in Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill – yeah, you know, um, but like, if you've got talent, which we all agree, Antonio Brown still does have the talent. But and, and I mean, as yeah, long as you have that, you're going to have a team that that's going to come crawling. Yeah, I the only problem is non- he's kind of, he's kind of like a, a a locker room cancer though. That's the only thing. Like those guys, they've done horrible things off the field, like probably worse than Antonio Brown, allegedly. Um, but they, he kind of disrupts the flow of the team, the locker room, and they're just kind of like – they're good locker room guys. They're just assholes off, off the field. So I, I mean, this is we'll going see. to trial. Well, what, happens, what happens when this goes to trial and, and this, this accuser's um, story falls apart? Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if that does happen and, and, and Antonio Brown goes scot-free, like – you know, teams are going to be all over. Hypo- it's a big no, hypothetical. It's a big hypothetical. There's multiple. There's multiple accusers at this point, but I would say two. Like, no, I'm not defending. I, I'm not defending Brown. I'm just saying that that I think he. I think there's. I think he's non, going to be re-signed. I think there's a non-zero chance he's played his last down. I think. That's, I, I think that's I, all. I, I think that's uh, also true as well. Because this podcast is all about stats, can I just read you off his 2015 year? Please, please. Because you, you I guys are going to. No, I didn't oh, you have him, had him? Year, actually. No, oh, no, I had God. him I had him in 2014. I had him in 2014. Okay. Started all 16 games. He had 193 targets, which is outrageous. Um, 136 receptions. Mm-hmm. 1,834 yards and 10 touchdowns. The touchdowns okay. aren't that gaudy, but everything else there is super gaudy. So that, that, was, the year, that was the year, Ben, that um, – Brown, uh, Hopkins, and Julio Jones all had, and and Odell Beckham, though to a lesser degree than the, those three, that was like the year of the receiver, right? If I'm not mistaken, um, all three of those receivers just put up the gaudiest. I think probably it's fair mm-hmm. to say, at least in the case of Brown and Jones, I think those were the best years of their. Holy their shit! Career. I'm looking it up right now, man. You're right. Julio Jones, 136 receptions as well. Yep. Uh, 203 targets. <laughs> 18, 1,871 yards, eight touchdowns. And um, he had DeAndre Hopkins, 111 receptions, uh, 1,521 yards, 11 touchdowns. Jesus Christ. Even Jarvis, yeah. Jarvis Landry, 110 receptions. Larry Fitzgerald, yep. 109. Demarius Thomas, who was let go by the Patriots, 105. And traded. Traded to New York. Oh, that's right. He was traded. Yep. Yeah. Wish they were having that one back now. They, they're so loaded at receiver, though. I mean, they, I mean, they, they kind of are. But, like, I mean, they've got they got Jules. they got Jacoby. Uh, Josh Gordon. But how, Jacoby. how much can you trust J- Josh Gordon? Like, it's a good story so far, but, like, well, I hope they can you know, just like, have him on a fantasy Like team. last year, it, it was like it. he was he was playing. Uh, Josh Gordon was playing, 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 playing. And then on a Monday, like, oh, he's gone. Like, yeah, it just comes out of nowhere. Like, you don't know. It could, it could happen at any time, but he's playing, going fine. And yeah, I suppose – I, I, I'm just going by what Tom Brady has said in the press, and I trust anything he says. So he, you got he to. Is, you have to trust that. Yeah, he's like a you demigod. Really so he, he said at that – uh, yeah, he said that Josh Gordon is a great teammate. I think he actually said those yeah. exact words. A great teammate, he loves him. Josh Gordon loves him. It's a big love fest, and it all accumulated last last week. Uh, five targets for two receptions and nineteen yards. So I mean, <laughs> it, it's it's amazing their connection. I'm so glad I drafted him. Yeah, um, I mean, well, you know, course. Tom Brady. Tom Brady also had the uh, the foresight to to welcome Antonio Brown into his home. Um, oh, no. what, what a great teammate. guy what a great guy look he was doing what he could he, to get him on the um the the, the uh, long and narrow but yeah it, no for sure it, it didn't it didn't happen i mean you can't yeah, just trying waltz to get him in on and, and think narrow, you can do right? the tb12 method you can't just waltz in to fucking foxborough think you can do the tb12 method 
<laughs> and that that you're going to be able to to get on the field like that. Like no no mm-hmm. no, this takes time. This takes Tom, Tom Al Callings Brady. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that 2015 year with all the receiving numbers, Odell Beckham, I think that might have been his rookie year. No, it was his rookie year. Second year? year? All right. 96 catches, 1,400 yards, 13 touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. My goodness. Quite a a year. Delaney Walker, Um, 94 catches. All right. I could go on. Can I give a quick quick shout out, like sort of a a mini part of this? I want to just shout out um, two old fellas in at skill positions that are still kicking and that very much have you know really had strong starts to the year now i know for sure that one of them is older than all three of us i think the other one is older than two of us and then the third one might be i think simmons you might be like a week or so older than him but i'm speaking of both larry fitzgerald and frank Gore. uh these two guys are both 36 years old They've been in the league since 2005, right? When we were still in college. Oh, um, Franklin. We were still college idiots, and now we're merely mid-30s idiots, right? Mm. Um, and these guys are still in the league. Frank Gore for the Bills. Uh, Fitz for the Cardinals. Fitzgerald looks awesome in uh, the Kingsbury offense with Kyler Murray. Frank Gore with Devin Singletary going down. Had a really productive week last week against the Giants, and I just want to say that's pretty amazing for both of them. Yeah, and I'll tell you, they have really, such productivity at really the very advanced stages. My back, my back problems, thirty-five, and my back problems that I'm having right now puts it into perspective. Just how amazing what Frank Gore and Larry Fitzgerald. Are doing like your back, your body starts to break down in your 30s. Yep, They're like you, your peaks are at your 20s, and then it starts to slowly break down. I've been learning mm-hmm. all this shit from the doctors that like your back, like what's it's got something that that protects it. So in your 20s, it, it can grow back, but it's not there in your 30s. So mm-hmm. oh, you, you're more suspect to injuries. In your thirties, you're, all, you're and also beyond. more suspect that's, to. Uh, that's a surprise. You're and, and you're not, and you're not going to, you're not going to um, come back from injuries sooner. You know, say, you're, you're also more suspect to Achilles mm. disease in your thirties. The concept of aging. I never thought about that. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, but it I, is, it is wild because I... Frank Gore, like, he, like he, he's just chugging along and still getting yeah. uh, meaningful reps. Like the fact that he's going to and it's outlast. not like he's been lightly used, by the way. Oh, yeah. heavily. Yeah, what did he have like nineteen carries last week? No, uh, yeah, and I, I just mean through his career too. He's not one of those. No, guys it's true. Who, yeah, yeah. It's not like he's... a Jamal Charles thing where Jamal Charles was used sparingly for a long time. Um, well, yeah. Gore was a three down back back when there was like yeah. th- three down backs. You know, were were the thing with the default. Yeah. Now it's like there's. Three headed monsters all over the damn place. Yeah, and, and the, the the unique thing about uh Gore is that he's one of those players that, that will get all the accolades, you know, get a Hall of Fame nod simply because of the longevity and how long Do you he's think been he doing. will? I mean Fitz, Fitzgerald is a no doubter, but will Gore make the Hall of Fame? He I got to a Super Bowl. Think, man, yeah, I think and he will. I think he and he's and he's up there on like total yards on like at some point yeah. no, being know. able to last this it, he's this gonna play for another five years especially, five years. especially at running back and especially how he <laughs> runs <laughs> he's gonna play till, till 2024 yeah i was actually when you when everybody was talking about him on the chat i was i started crafting this uh photoshop of him with like a really big gray beard but i mm-hmm. i I got waylaid and I, I just started doing something else. But I mean, I think he's going to play until, until his like legs just crumble to dust. I mean, he's like, and coaches love him. I mean, he's just, he's well, a great locker room it. guy. Think about obviously. it. They, the, the bills coaching staff, which I love, by the way, I, I think, I think Sean McDermott is highly underrated, but the bills coaching staff picked Frank Gore over LaShawn McCoy. 
Now, some of that I mean, did have to do with money, but like uh, McCoy's the body's point breaking is, down more than Gore's is, though, at this point. I, you know? I, by the way, I don't the, disagree, the but is, but McCoy's what, like six years younger? It's true. But yeah, Gore has five, the body five, of like a 27 years. year old. That's my point. Um, he's aging slower than everybody else. He's yeah. he has like he has like the reverse, you know, that movie Jack, Robin Williams. Yeah. He <laughs> has the reverse. Movie. He has the reverse of that. He's getting. I did not he, expect he, a Jack reference. It's today. like Benjamin Button. <laughs> He's getting. <laughs> For my birthday that year, when that movie came out, like all my friends, we went to uh, uh, Showcase Cinemas Jack. on Shelbyville Road, and we watched mm-hmm. that movie. We watched that fucking movie. That was like the birthday party. Not the Showcase party. on uh, on Bardstown. You went to. Oh, like, sorry, w? it was on Bardstown. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. Lowe's up there. The on, one across, um, the one across from the Rose Bowl, kind of, right? It was across from Mr. Gaddy's. <laughs> or, yeah, but the the Rose Bowl's further back off the road, right? The one we were. I think I think so. Bowl. Yeah, it was close yeah. to Rose Bowl. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. a little reference. Um, but yeah, no, that, we no, can just keep it. talking about Jack if you want to. No, I could Bye. go another hour. <laughs> no, let's keep going. Let's By keep the way, going. Tell uh, us. the bills, the bills have not like. Full credit to the Bills for winning the New York State Championship, or whatever people said were saying in the New York uh, in the New York newspapers. But uh, you know, let's let's cool our jets on the Bills a little bit. Like, let's see them like play well, a team next that's week, not going to go four and twelve next week. Patriots, Kemp, what do you think? Oh, I, think the I think I think they're going to get roasted. I mean, let's, give me a let's give me a, here. Uh, final if there's score. one if there's one team that the New England Patriots have dominated in the AFC East. The, like if you, they've dominated everyone. But if there's one team they've dominated more than any others, it is the Buffalo Bills. Their defense okay. is good, though. I think Tom the Brady's lost twice talk. to them. It'll be the first Patriots real defense talk. they play, though. At that point, like week four, you know, they, leading up to that game next week against the Bills, that's going to be the best defense they face. Up to that I mean, point. It's a, it's, a sol- it's a solid defense, but I um, I've uh, had I've had my fill of Patriots talk. I think Josh, <laughs> we're talking about the Bills here. As of I, I think Josh, I think Josh Allen, um, at Buffalo uh, too. Is, is, is like I, I am surprised at Josh Allen. I, I did not take him that that he would be this good, um, in the NFL. Like he still is has he, his is warts. He this good. I, I thought him. he was going to be terrible, man. I thought he was going to be awful. I mean, but, I think it's still possible. Like he's Blake Bortles, bad. bad. Yeah. Well, he's a good fantasy but, but, player. You know that. Yeah, like he he's actually been he's actually been solid. Like I'm Brandon, gonna he, you a, he, I'm going to give you a quarterback this decade who is was big and he was hyped, and I think he was a first round pick, and he put Marcus. up stats in his first year or two, and that quarterback is a guy by the name of Josh Freeman. Oh, I thought you were going to say Jamarcus Russell. Oh, no, yeah, Jamarcus I think, Russell. I don't. I think it's just as likely that Josh Allen is Josh Freeman as it is that he's, you know. But but Josh uh, Allen flamed ben, out had ben nothing. That had nothing to do with him, um, his skills on the field, more than it did as much as it did just his you his free, you mean attitude. Freeman? Yeah, Freeman, his attitude. Well, maybe like that, he, he was a strange he was out, cat. He was out of the league. He was out of the league pretty quickly, and but he's a stra- he was he was a strange cat, man. He was kind of a head case. Yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah. it's true. But Fine, like but, that obstructed but, him as much as anything. I, I don't put it past Josh Allen. Being it's a bull take. Decent for decent for fantasy, but not an actual good quarterback. I mean, I haven't seen much that's indicated he's that good. I just like him for fantasy. Well, but, but, I actually okay, haven't watched but, a lot of his games, to be honest. I just like see the stats, and I'm like, oh, I, I like the rushing yards. I like the, you know, yeah, he had a rushing touchdown last week, 20 yards. I just like the stats, but I, I need when to I watch him like, on a red zone, if you're, if when, you're, I see, when I see him on red zone, he's either scrambling around like a giraffe, or he's throwing the ball 74 yards. Usually, <laughs> usually overthrowing his. Oh, wait, his uh, I'm not saying he yards. doesn't have he doesn't have areas <laughs> where he needs to improve, but I think. In, in on the whole, when you have quarterbacks that are uh, consistently good in fantasy, that they're also good in real life. 
Yeah, I can so, see that. So, if he, so, because I, I would say he had a pretty successful rookie year. Ryan Fitzpatrick. So far, so good for year two. <laughs> Jameis Winston. I, like, I, I would I, I think James as a whole, Kim, have a Kim, I think as a whole, you're right. I, I think as a whole, you're right. But I think there are some exceptions, obviously. But I, I think, and I don't think Jameis Winston had a good year his first year. Or, or he's had any some of really good years. fantasy days. He's had some really good. He's fantasy had some good fantasy years. Like like last year, I think he's had some good you, fantasy games. You added up Fitzpatrick and and um, Winston last year. If you added up their stats. They were like the second like, rated fantasy I was quarterback, say like QB two or something. QB five. Yeah, they yeah. were like the be- like second best QB like in fantasy last year. Yeah, kind yeah. Of if, wild. You sp- if you it, yeah, if you did split it, but you split it. So I like I, I can't. Um, well, it, it's like one, it's one QB for one team. So if you just take their, I mean, that your point is well taken, but my point, my point is that, you know, in that system, you're able to put up a lot of stats, but not necessarily win games. Yeah. So. No, but you know, um, the point but is, I, I like, Marcus I like Josh Allen. Oh yeah. Josh Allen. Um, I mean, he, he looks like a, a, a homeless think... man, Steve Young. That's, that's my, that's my take. I do, I do think it's it's going to be New England's hardest challenge in the AFC East, and but That's I think not saying a lot. That I think they're going to smoke a, I, both games. I think they're going to smoke them. Okay, so you'd say Can like you, forty to forty to fifteen, something like that. I was going to say, give me. Let's go over under thirty combined to combined wins. Combined wins over under from Bills, Jets, Dolphins combined by the end of the year. So I'll I'll set it at. Ooh, I'll set it at eleven and a half. Over. Oh, Wait, hold on, say. hold on, hold on, hold on. Eleven and a half. Interesting. That means my if Miami gets no wins. That see that that's the kicker. If Miami gets like two wins at the end of the year or something. Yeah, I think gonna, Miami's going to win a game. I've heard people say they're a shoe in for one sixteen. I I think they're. Gonna I think win they a game. will. I think I it's think, just you I catch they, somebody on the wrong week. I mean, it's just the NFL. Exactly. It's going to happen. You know, I, bad I weather. Think, I I think the Bills will get nine, maybe ten wins. Ten might be a stretch, but I think nine. Yeah, I mean the I Bills do, already which have means, two, wins, which right? means the the Jets would have to win three. So yeah, the I think I'd go over. Bills are issue in for seven and nine or eight and eight every year. They're like an eight and eight team if ever I saw one. Sam Darnold coming back. I think they I think they've got a shot at getting a wild card spot. By the way, do the Chargers play the if the Chargers played the Dolphins, the most the most Chargers shit ever would be like week fourteen to go to Miami and Miami's like zero and twelve, and, and then lose them, and they go to Miami no, and lose. They play like in week four. Twenty one. They play in week didn't, four. Twenty four. Chargers. Didn't they? Cleveland? Okay, Cleveland beat them Still could to get their one and fifteen. See, I feel like that that win is going to be yeah that Cleveland did beat them. You're right. All right, let's um, let's look through the Miami schedule. I'm curious. Okay. This is going to be fun. But I don't think they play uh, L.A. The Mike and the Mad Dog? The Mike and the Mad Dog? <laughs> yeah. <thing>. Well, <laughs> Kemp and I went through the Patriots schedule, and I got to say, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that because he yeah. he couldn't admit that they would lose to any uh, any of the games. It's just really, it was really funny. Yeah. Well, like, um, like, I, I, like, I don't I really understand. See him, but... I don't really see them losing a, a, a particular game, but at the same time, like I don't think they're going to go undefeated. But if I, I look that, at no, any I, single game, I'm like, I, I can't really no, pick a game. I, can, I, I was just poking fun at your uh, fanboy ways, Kim. I, I totally understand. Uh, rational. Um, I think I think that's yeah. known as rational. Yeah, ways. well, ra- rational fanboy. You know, if that, if that thing even if that even exists, I don't know. Rational. Okay, so do- Dolphins at Cowboys coming up. We can we can say it's probably a loss. What do you What do you guys think? Well, yeah. What does that? Uh, what does Russo do? He's like. That's a loss, Mike. Mike, that's a loss. <laughs> <laughs> I've only heard the Simmons cousin Sal version. Oh, you've of that. never heard like, the real the real no, version. I've never heard the real is, version. It's real. It, it, so, it sounds exactly like what they're doing. I get the cartoon um, version. So Chargers at Dolphins week week four now. Gordon Gordon he, swiped Justin Jackson off the waiver wire. I was trying to get him back on my team. See, another guy who got lost in the churn. But I think Justin Jackson is gonna light up the Dolphins week four, get like 20 fancy points or something in garbage time. So I, I, I'm going to say Chargers are going to whoop them up week four. That's actually yeah, not a bad, like that, bad take. 
I, I if think, that were I like think... week fifteen, if that were like week fifteen, the Chargers would absolutely be losing that game, twenty four to twenty one. They would miss four field goals. They'd have four touchdowns called back, just like the exact thing game that the Chargers lose. <laughs> Uh, and also, there, there's a there's a hot take floating around. I'm, uh, it might be from me. I don't know that the Dolphins <laughs> just are going to play really bad at home and actually be decent on the road. So I might take Ooh, wow. them as a I might take them as a road dog one of these games. Like I'm looking at the uh, the Dolphins. I'm intrigued. Intrigued by the are temperature you of that take. No, no, no. That's you, Kemp. You're high. I can tell. Are but... you high, man? What the fuck? Are you crazy? You no, would take just, the Dolphins? I'm just saying, it, not to win, but like you know, maybe to, to cover. cover. Like one of these random yeah. games. Like for instance, oh, well, cover. At, that's at the, different. At the Jets. No, I, think, I, I agree. I think they will cover. Or at if, the if Dolphins. If the Lions keep being, yeah, but still, it's pretty I'm crazy, sorry, man. At, 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 at the Giants, uh, uh, week, whatever, uh, December fifteenth, at the Giants. I could see maybe that being a win. If they keep uh, making the lines yeah. at like seventeen or eighteen, they will cover. So I agree. They're <laughs> no, not going to lose pretty like bad. three touchdowns, yeah. and they're going to win one of these game. games, like you said, Sam. I mean, like one of these games, like Jets. Do you, at have, Dolphins. Their, do you have their December schedule? I swear, December Dolphins. I'm all in. Yeah, you got it right here. Dolphins. So December first, Eagles at Dolphins. Yeah. Then you got okay. Dolphins at Dolphins at Jets, which I, I that could be no, that could be upset. Dolphins, Dolphins at Giants. At Jets. Dolphins at Giants, uh, December fifteenth. That could be a win. Barn Bingle, burn. Bingles at Dolphins. There it is, right there. There's your win. There, Bingles at yeah, Dolphins. Oh, Bingles no, at man. Dolphins. I'm picking put, that one. Can't put your <laughs> life savings. Put your life savings in that happening. game. Do it. No, dude. that's happening. Are you are you crazy? Week are seventeen. Week seventeen. Dolphins at Patriots. Patriots could be sitting all their players. They could be sitting all their players. Not if they're yeah. fifteen and zero. Wow! But what if Belichick, the truth what if comes Belichick out. He really wants the loss. Well. What if he wants the loss because he didn't like the undefeated thing? No, no. He, good point. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now that they could start Jared Studham, Studham, and um, did him. They yeah. would. They would crush the Dolphins. So overconfident. The Dol- I feel like the, your Patriots id is coming Dude, through right now. It's like no, no, no. And no. really I, I don't mean that. Right I now. don't mean that to be uh, on my high horse or anything. But like they have well, never, they, they have never beaten Tom oh, Brady. Yeah. They have never in the Tom Brady era. They have never beaten the Patriots in New England at Foxborough. Oh, it's it's a high horse, all right. It's a very high. I'm just horse. telling you. I, I look at the stats. I look at the facts. That's what I do. I look at the stats. I am stat oriented. I am Bayesian, and when I get different information, I start okay. to change my beliefs. And the facts say that Miami is going to get crushed in uh, Foxborough. I have so, Bengals at Dolphins. Simmons. I have the Dolphins over the Bengals in Week 16. Mark it down. I think we should place a wager on that. I, I'm I'm totally yeah. on board. We let's 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 convene back uh, two days before. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, two days before Christmas Eve, Perfect. December twenty December twenty second. We'll reconvene mm-hmm. and we'll toss around some bets. Um, if you're gonna, you if, think, you, if either of you all will be up. in Louisville, we should have like a watch party, a Dolphins Bengals watch party. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, who's um, going to be the QB for the Dolphins at that point? We don't even know. It could be like a, it could be somebody completely different. I mean, Sage, uh, Sage Rosenfels, <laughs> Josh Rosen. Hey, what do you think about Josh Rosen's career thus far? Oh man, Sam. I could go on for days about this. Just kidding. Go ahead, Sam. <laughs> uh, well, he he certainly because if I remember correctly, you were the you. Pegged him like as the number no, one QB out of that class last year. I did, I did, and that that doesn't look like a very smart take right now. I think that, but I think he's got possible. gotten kind of screwed. hasn't had the best environments. Can I can I, can I fit, may I finish? If you're going to ask yeah, let's me, go. am I allowed to finish? Um, well, it's just, I was trying to go, but you were you were cutting me off. Well, the, so I think you're putzing. I think I think that <laughs> Josh putzing. Rosen. I like that verb. Go ahead, Sam. Sorry. I think that Josh Rosen, what I've seen so far has been not great, but it's also – so it's possible that he's just not as advertised and that he will go down as being perhaps overhyped in the sort of 
Blaine Gabbard, um, Jake Locker, Christian Ponder, Mold, who were all taken around that point in the first round. That's on on the table. That has to be. Um, but as you all are kind of intimating here, I think that he, I mean, he has really, in these two different situations, just been completely set up for failure. And it's impossible to tell on the, the Dolphins team how good he is. Um, I did have Rosen. I had Lamar second, and um, I feel good about that. I think Lamar could end up being even first in that class. But, no, I mean, Rosen clearly, you know, it, it has not gone well. But I just it, – it's hard for me to see, based on how bad Arizona was last year in terms of their entire roster, it's just hard for me to gauge and put all of that on Rosen's shoulders. It, and it, I think it, this this week – when they play at Dallas, again, he's going to be on a really shitty team. And so it's like, in a sense, there's there's really no pressure on him because he's got, you know, he's not expected to, to do much. So I just, I, I want to see what it looks like when he has actual, uh, has time to throw the ball. Because that was the thing last year. Like, he would drop back and he's just like old school pocket passer. I mean, in the, out of college, there were legitimate comparisons based on his college tape to to the way that Rodgers looked in college. But last year when he dropped back, I mean, you drop back and he just gets crushed, right? Yeah, I I thought he was a good college prospect. I I actually liked him as well coming out. uh, I'm kind of with you on that end, Uh, Sam. I did have Baker Mayfield number one in my class. uh, Not looking good right now. Not looking good. I think think, think they've got it. I I think it's – you know, they came in with a little bit I too thought. much swagger, but I, I do like uh, Mayfield's game. I like. He did, I not, he did not look that good against the Jets, though, if we're yeah, being he, honest. I think – no, I, I mean, I think of, he looks rusty, I was kind of, I mean, Kemp, I was kind of like needling you a little bit. I think he's going to be good. But one thing I did read, though, is that they're going to – don't simple, needle. Don't fucking gonna, needle, man. You oh, told I'm you I was needle, on edge. I'm going to needle you I right was on needle, edge today. Why didn't you hear your urethra? I'm going to needle you. Um, <laughs> not fucking oh god, ow, that really hurts just to think about. But no, I, I'm, I was talking about. Um, I was talking about they're going to they're going to install a short passing game for Baker because their offensive line has been just letting people through like crazy. Yeah, man. They're, so they're, that's they're that's going to open things sucks. up. They, they got to get they got to get Jarvis Landry involved, man. They got to get he, you got to start passing. Jarvis Landry passes. isn't that good. I don't. I don't particularly like Jarvis Landry. Um, he's a well, stack settled. compiler. Um, his game's what? not for me. He's a stack compiler, dude. He had, he had sticky hands. Man, what did he? What was the stat a couple years ago where he had like almost a hundred catches and not even a thousand yards? Well, he's underneath guy. He's a slot guy, dude. dude, dude that is. is th- there's no way. That there there's is 2017, another 112 catches for 987. Dude, th- th- there is no way that there <laughs> is really another funny. that there is another wide receiver on the planet that has caught 112 balls and not gone over 1100 yards. Oh, I, love it. I feel like it's like Bizarro Gotti. I mean, it's you not love total- it. You love it when uh, when Julian Edelman does it, but when Jarvis Landry does it, nope. <laughs> No, when, when when Julian when Julian Edelman catches 112 balls, he's getting over a thousand yards. I mean, I don't think he's ever ca- caught that many balls. I could be okay, wrong. I'm, I'm pulling out the stats right now. Um, he's playing but, but, the same but, like, role. Like 112 balls, like that. That reminds me of like Welker, and Welker okay, balled Kemp. out when he so when he this had is, that this many is, catches. This is going to be a little dose of reality for you, Kemp, because Julian Edelman caught 105 receptions in 2013. And he had 1,056 yards. How many? Oh, interesting. 1,000, 1,056. 1,000? 1,000? But he, okay. 1,000? He, he barely, <laughs> thousand? he barely went over 1,000. Like 1, 75 right. more yards than And then get, 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 almost, this, Kemp, right. get this, Kemp. The next hey, almost, year. Almost, had, barely, that only counts with horseshoes and hand grenades or whatever the saying is. He got, what? he got over that mark. Uh, okay, but continue. The, the next, continue. the next year, uh, he had. Now, this is admittedly in not sixteen games. Yeah. It was in fourteen games, he had ninety-two catches for nine hundred and seventy-two yards. So, mm. I mean, 
I don't know, man. How many? How many games? You, did you play? Your arguments falling apart a little bit here. Yeah, no, the games. The something. games don't matter. The, it, don't worry about the games. All right, get the games out of your head. Get them out of your mind. <laughs> throw them in the little pond and make a wish. Okay, it's not about the. It's not, it's not about the games. It's about the stats. All right. My, what do you guys, I, What do you guys think of those all brown Browns uniforms? While we're talking about Jarvis Landry, they're pretty ugly. <laughs> I mean, if kind of like I, mean, I haven't shit. really had a chance to form a, an opinion on that, but if it's all brown, like I mean, shit brown. Yeah, I mean, they're, brown, they're embracing yeah. the shit. Like when you think you say brown, you think of shit. They're embracing that whole concept, which I, you know, I, yeah. I commend them for that. Yeah, I just think I think mono brown is maybe not the way I would go. Not not what I would go with, but you know. Yeah. Do well, you think Cleveland? They don't really listen to. They don't really listen to any sort of uh, advice in Cleveland. So unfortunately they probably will just they'll go in one ear and out the other. Um well they got they 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 hired Teddy Kittens uh, or Freddie Kittens as um as as their head coach. Like they didn't even really do a search. Like Josh McDaniel is there practically begging for the job. Really? Yeah but he, he sucked as a head coach before so I mean not not practically begging but Was but he really they really want the Cleveland job? Why? Yeah, dude. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Well, yeah, he 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 floated his name out there. Kind of like well, he's he from Akron. Akron. He's from Akron. He should white knuckle grip that <laughs> Patriot Patriots offensive coordinator. Like he's got because... connections to the old Browns. Okay. Well, he's heir apparent though. I mean, he's heir apparent to um to Belichick, right? So yeah, but should... mm. the, the, I you... mean, it depends. But, I, I like. Does he want to stay? Please, Please, no. I mean, who, who knows how long Bill Belichick's going to be around? You know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm done guessing. How old is he? I'm I'm also very done guessing about the Patriots. Yeah, uh, he's 67 uh, years old. But speaking of uh, the, the, Patriots, the point is like, they, they hired Freddie Kittens and yeah. um, like didn't even really do a proper coaching search. And I think they hired him because because. Uh, um, Baker Mayfield gave his uh, nod of approval. You know they should have done. They should have traded for Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel should have traded for Mike Vrabel. Uh, well, I, yeah, exactly. All right, let, let's have this conversation. Let's have that conversation right now. Right now, if you we have, don't need to, it's okay. You look around the league. I want to talk about my like, home. I want this Lamar. guy. I want this guy to coach <clears throat> my team. Like Vrabel would be up there. So so All right, let's talk about what, what are what are his attributes that you like the most? Well, I think he's a, I, I think I think I think he's a solid defensive mind. I, I think he's somebody that um is smart as a whip that can I mean he was at least w- when he was with the Patriots like he was their captain, he was the signal caller like he he and he was like a a, a player's player. Like the players loved him. The, now he's a co- he's a a, a a a player coach. Like like the players love him as coach. Well, no, he's he's got he's got he's got, he's he's got like an affable coach. he's got like an affable personality. Like he shoots the shit. <laughs> I, uh, I I just feel like he's got one of those. He's got, got one of those. Uh, he's got one of those those uh, football minds. It's hard. Well, it's now, hard now guess, but, you know. Now I'm convinced. I went into it not convinced, and now now. I'm convinced. Let me finish. The only thing that's wrong is a he's got a shitty quarterback for to run his offense, and b like he doesn't have all that much experience with offense. So the, and so the guys he's he's hiring are are you know just left. So now he's got to install a new offense. He he's needs to learn. He needs he's to have the stability, and he needs to start learning this the offense, the other side of the ball, um, the way Belichick did. When when uh, Charlie Weiss left to go to Notre Dame, he he had Charlie to learn Weiss. the offense. Oh. oh, Charlie Weiss, that's a good one. That's from way back. Man, yeah. So and so so basically, Bill Belichick. I mean, not that he didn't know about the offense offense beforehand, but like. He he, in effect, he became pretty... offensive coordinator for a couple of years. Yeah, well, well, what do you, this whole Mariota thing, like Simmons? Honestly, give the other side of that. 
can you give the other side of that? Well, I was going to say, I, 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 I feel like the offense that they should be running is more like a up-tempo read option, you know, quick passes, get it out of his hands. Like there have been flashes of brilliance that Mariota has displayed in his short career where that, that style of offense is what they were doing, you know, like in the hurry up or they just have not utilized their talent correctly. And I feel like that's happening again this year. And Vrabel, Vrabel, Vrabel has enough, he has enough experience with Mariota to know what he's good at. He's got a and year I, and a couple games. That's what I he mean, did with or, at Oregon with Chip Kelly, by the way, was exactly what you're talking about. Before. I know, I know. That's how that's how he played. So to I mean, your point, like, install it's like not the like Lamar Jackson's. Yeah, like the Lamar Jackson style offense that the Ravens are running this year, like that kind of offense, like or or do uh, like yeah, Chip Kelly style, like quick, you know, quick passes or like even like a going way back, like Rich Gannon in the early 2000s with Oakland. Quick little passes, you know, bootlegs, just like get him moving, get him out of the pocket instead of like having him do these long dropbacks and getting. That's why he's getting sacked so much. He used to be so elusive. Oh, no, don't it? No, shit. hard to watch, dude. He got sacked nine times last night. Nine times. That that that's that's on him. When it's that many, that's on him, man. And that's not that's not a shabby offensive line. Like that 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 is a reputable offensive line for the Titans um, with Luan and um, what's the other guy? Uh, Taylor. Luan. Luan and then the. the um, Conklin. The, Conklin. There you go. Tyler. Con- no. Their offense Jake just Jack has Con- no creativity though. Con- like, where's, the, where's the creativity? Like they've, got, they've got good. They've got good players on the offensive line. That getting sacked nine times. Four times the week prior and four times the week prior, that's not – that's a testament to how poor the quarterbacking has been. I don't think it's – listen, I, I'll, I'll put some of that on Mariota, but I, I don't think that you can put it all on him because it's the scheme. I mean, they, for instance, they have all these guys they picked up. They have Deion Lewis. They have, uh, you know, Leather Diaper Award winner from last year. His name is escaping. Uh, Adam Humphreys. Adam, Adam Humphreys. Humphrey. He, he was a and nominee. They're not using – they're not using – Nominee, sorry. They're not using any of these guys correctly. Like, you, Kemp, you and I both, when Deion Lewis went to Tennessee, when, when, uh, when, when, uh, when Deion Lewis went, went to Tennessee, we were both super excited. We we're like, oh, you know, shades of, of, uh, the way he was, you know, a few yeah. years before then, before he got hurt, you know, Absolutely. he's going to get like 80 receptions. He's going to be like a Charlie Garner with the Raiders, like 900 and 900, you know, he's going to be running, he's going to be catching passes. I get, I had Deion Lewis on my team last year when Mike Vrabel was the coach. Mariota was there. It was one of the most frustrating things watching that offense. It was vanilla. There was no creativity. There yep. was you got to put this. You got to put Mariota in the shotgun first of all. There's not much of that, and it's it just they weren't passing enough to the running backs. They weren't utilizing their personnel on the right way. I agree that Mariota has underperformed. But I think it, it, it's, it's just – maybe we should just throw it all out and then the next team he goes to, you know, and they actually implement the style he's good at, maybe then we can actually be like, okay, is he good or not? Because it's really hard to gauge his skill level with this this shitty offense. Just I saying. agree with everything that Ben just said. I and I would, I, would add, I would add to that that, you know, if the scheme isn't working, that – Whose job is it to change it? It's not on the quarterback to to go and say, "Well, I'm just going to do something different than is being called here." They play so glacially slow, right? I mean, Ben used that word "glacial" last last week and to describe Brady's Brady's workout video or whatever or his combine thing. They play oh, yeah. so yeah. freaking slow, and they drafted AJ Brown. They drafted Corey Davis. These are two receivers who were highly touted, and they just don't use them. It's like they're they're running an offense from another era. And to Ben's point, they pay – I actually just dropped Deion Lewis today. So if you want him, he's all yours. But they pay him a bunch of money to come and do nothing. And it's just – Derrick Henry is clearly the guy, and he's the guy who should get more touches, I guess. But to Ben's point, it's just not an offense that looks – like the offenses that do well now 
in the NFL. It just doesn't look the same. And it's not like if they're going to try and zag when everyone else is zigging, you know, kind of the way that the, the Memphis Grizzlies did in the middle of the decade in the NBA. You have to actually be good at doing that. And they're not, me, they're not good me, enough Let me retort. I, 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 I hear your arguments here. I think they are um, valid, if not, it's, albeit not sound. Um, no, the dog, sound doesn't, not the dog does not agree with you at all. Brady, yeah, Brady does not Brady, agree with what you're about to say. Brady, my dog Brady does not agree with me. Um, I will have to, I, I will have to close the door here in a second. I don't think pull a mic back, please. The point that the fact that I don't think it's a, it's just oh, a coincidence that that Marcus oh, Mariota has had three head coaches, three different head coaches, and all of them have drafted to to. You can tell I've, I've said it from the get go. That you don't, the only time you know a team's intentions is in a trade or in the draft. And what would, what were the Titans telling you in the draft? They were, they have mm. been telling you that we want to focus on the offense and we want to focus specifically on the pass game. That's why you get Corey Davis. That's why you get Johnny Smith. That's why you get Taewon. AJ Brown. AJ Brown. AJ Brown. Um, that's why you get the, these plays and sign Deion Lewis. And, and water books. I don't, I don't, I, it's why you draft Marcus Mariota in the first place because you, you see him at Oregon, you see the system he runs, you say, Hey, man, he's good. He's like got they're not good running that system, too. though. They're not running that system, but, but he, yeah. but they're saying, let, Let's build this is what he does best. Let's build him a, 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 a pass first offense, and he just can't do it. I mean, Corey Davis. They're not running a pass first offense. Favorite wide receiver coming into the draft um, two years, three years ago. God, I can't they, they, they're, ago. They're, like he was my favorite. Not, he was my favorite one out of the draft, and like he has sucked. And yet, I still think he's got value if you just get the right quarterback there. Because when Marcus Mariota last night, when he was uh, dropping back, he would he would. Clo- uh, lower his lower his head the first time he saw pressure. He doesn't know pocket awareness. That's why I love about Gardner Minshew is that he's got a pocket presence around him. He knows when the pocket's co- collapsing and he knows when to step up. Marcus Mariota, has, uh, Marcus Mariota has shaky feet. He he gets he's never he's never in the shotgun. He's never in the shotgun. He does play action. He does like seven step drops. You need to give like put Jeff him in a position where the ball the ball can come out quicker. It, it it gets to a point where you see, okay, this is what he can do. Well, here's my this question, is what, guys. This is what this the is guy a, can do, and this is I, what he can't do. Like he doesn't he doesn't pass. Man, I remember last year he was playing. They were it was Monday night football, um, and he was or Thursday night, one of the two, and he, they were playing the Steelers. And I mean, uh-huh. they would show the replay from like behind the QB, so you could see what the QB's looking at. And he threw the absolute worst interception I have ever seen. It, it is, I mean, it, he was thrown to nobody but the um, the the other team, the Steelers. You know, listen, and, and, listen you could be right about Mar- Mariota. We'll see. I think he's not like Mariota coming system. out of college. But here, I here's he my be a good here's, QB. Here's, but the, like one last point on Mario, I'm just going to ask you guys a question, and then we can move on. But what would happen if you, if you if if you replaced Goff with Mariota? How do you think Mariota would fare in that situation, Kim? If you if you put Mariota with the Rams, yes, that's a great question. I think he would do awesome. Okay, so then you're agreeing with our point that he's just in the wrong that's system. What, that then you, you're. I mean, no, 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 no. I, I, no, you already agreed. Okay, let's move on. From the beginning, <laughs> I think he would because that that would have been a. Uh, uh, you've got Sean McVay there. You've got also good weapons. Well, my well, I guess our point is that he needs that. So why not system. try to run what they run? Then is what we're saying. Well, like, I, mean, I think. I you think they have, system. and he hasn't been able to do it for one reason or another. No, but they haven't doing, tried that. Like 1990s, like run first offense. You know, and I like I I actually like Derrick Henry. Don't, and don't diss the run first. Establish the run is coming back. You're seeing it with the page. Well, maybe not the page. Well, well th- this issues, is the point uh, that it's been made a lot, but I'll just echo it here: is that if if like the other team knows that you're going to run, if it's like very clear that you're going to run, then it's easier to stop. 
And like that's so it um McVeigh and even Belichick, his teams do better than anybody else. It's like, you know, you're you're in these weird formations or you're in shotgun and it's like you kind of keep the defense off balance. I just I don't see what the Titans they I don't I don't feel like they do that enough. But I mean look look oh well see how how um how many times did um uh, Mariota drop back yesterday yesterday? I have no clue. I mean they're trying to come back most of the game, so probably a lot. Yeah, I mean, so I like I I don't see, I don't see where you're. Um, but their scheme is their scheme. Their scheme is he flawed. Three attempts last night. Yeah, I know, but because they're trying to come back the whole time. But they're my point is like, okay, let's let, like why not run more like from the shotgun with three wide receivers and a tight end split out wide or something or like why and like he's always excelled in the shotgun. He's always excelled quick passes, get the but, ball out of his hands, or run. And, they, and they're not the tailoring slot. the offense to that skill set. What's that, Sam? Right. I said put Lewis, put Deion Lewis in the slot. Yeah. And have Henry on the field too. Make, like, make try, Deion new, a, try new shit. Try even even Nagy and stuff like that. He has Tariq Cohen in the slot and like his, you know, it's RB in the backfield. I mean, I don't know. It's just I feel like the Titans Cause, offense cause, is not innovative. Chris, Chris, the worst that could happen. Is that you try to run that? It doesn't have to be exactly what McVay runs. I know that's easier said than done. I get that. You, but the worst that can happen if you try it is that you're exactly right that Mariota isn't good enough, and then you know he's not good enough, and then you can move on. I, yeah. I, I I just feel I feel like they are doing that. They have done that. And they Mario, have, I, I think that. so, they man. Not, they they, they have not haven't installed that. the offense that he. He is best at, but like, listen, you could be right. He could be awful. Three, we'll find, three, three we'll find out. We'll three find out. Coaches, and all, every single one of them just happened to say, no, we're going to do a run. Honestly, first. it's been, it's been weird. Every single one of them has done this, like these exotic run offenses. Like, I mean, some of it's because None they have, have Derrick Henry. Good. They've all, they've all been run first offenses. And, you know, maybe they, they looked at Mariota and they're like, well, it's he like, can't I, I find that hard to believe. I just find it hard Dude, to believe. It, that, it, that it, three it, big coaches, every single one of them has has been in, trying to implement what most people say is an outdated, outmoded strategy. You don't uh, have to. You don't have to want to believe it, but it's a fact. You can and it's look not. Back, and it's not like they've been. You can look at what the offense they've run. They've run. Like what was the last Sam? What was the last they ran last year? It was like what was the exotic was the, uh, Smash Mouth? Yeah, exotic Smash Mouth. That was like their Ooh. thing. We're going to run the ball. We have two great running backs. We're just, you know. So my point but, but, is but, that no, 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 when no, no. are they going to when are they going to tailor the offense to yeah, Mariota? Uh, when are they going to tailor it to Mariota? That, that's what the exotic Smash Mouth was all about. The exotic part was the part where you're you're running, or uh, excuse me, where you're passing the ball. Was was but they what? weren't doing that? Is what we're saying. When when they were doing it, it was these play action dropbacks where he throws a lofted. 16 yard pass outside the numbers to Delaney Walker, who's running like a like a post corner or something. Look, it's not. I, it doesn't look like what the other offenses in the league look like, where the ball's out quickly, run some jailbreak screens, run some crosses over the middle, get the ball out, put him in the shotgun, let him do what he did to get him drafted where he was in the first place. All right, I, I they, they don't I run stuff like that. Chris, no, no, stuff hold on, let me, okay. let me, uh, Sam, Sam, Chris, no, I no, had no, Mariota. No. On my team, I watched Mariota a lot the last couple of years. If you think they've been running stuff like he ran at Oregon, you've been watching different games than I have. I didn't say I didn't they say just... they're running the same shit, man. I I, I said I'm saying that um, watching the game last night, just just last night, there the, I recall two passes that he threw to Corey Davis, and both of them were wildly inaccurate. This is anecdotal, which was not, which was not him in college, but this is how he's been all. For the last Kemp, year sir. and a half, at least Kemp, the last year and a half. Kemp, Kemp Mariota finished no second that. to last, two and a half. second to last in pass attempts last year. Wow, yeah. I wouldn't have even guessed that low. Three hundred and thirty-one pass attempts. You know who was last was Alex Smith, who got injured, so he was basically dead last. Yeah, last the- of all the last of the QBs who had who played a full season. He didn't play. He did. He played fourteen games, so that does affect some of it. But still, yeah. like even if he had played, so I like, give you give you context. Ben Roethlisberger had a crazy number six six hundred and seventy five. But like, let's just find like Dak Prescott five hundred and twenty six. 
The point is in the middle there, in the middle. Okay, so why why are we going to applaud that that or, or use that statistic? No, I'm just saying they didn't throw the ball a lot. You kept saying he threw the that they, they throw the ball all the time. That you're saying Smash Mouth Exotic is about throwing the ball, and I'm telling they, you that that's not the case the based on the stats. I said that they threw the ball 40 times last night. Is what I I'm said. talking about in the past, like how we were talking about the Exotic Smash Mouth run offense. You were saying they, that the Exotic run. part was passing. I'm just telling they, you that that's not the run, case. Set up the pass. Is what whatever, what, man. Okay, let's just move on. You, you are, you are, uh, you're gonna hold on, you're gonna clutch this, uh, you're gonna die in this hill. That's fine, you're dead. No, let's, what, let's what, what, what hill is it? What hill is it? It's the hill of what Marcus Mariota sucks. No, I'm you, not you, watching, you, I'm you, not you watching keep moving, you keep moving the goalposts, man. You, you, you said the exotic smash mouth was, it was the exotic part was throwing the ball. Was I'm telling ball. you, I'm telling you, that's not the case. So now you're saying. Well, last night he threw the ball a bunch. Well, okay. what are we talking about here? What, what exactly are you fact, arguing for? No, we're talking about the fact that I look at Marcus Mariota. Okay, you don't like I the way see, he looks. I see a I get football it. player that that doesn't like. There, there, there's no there's no uh, time where I'm watching Mariota play and I'm like, oh man, that was a beautiful ball. Oh man, that was a great pass that he threw. Oh look, okay. I'm, I always I I always it's your opinion. Defined. We get it. And, and the markings and the and the ratings agree with me that he's not that good. He's not been that good. Well, I, well we're just saying that maybe the, the fact, offense isn't tailored around his strengths. That's all we're put saying. Put him in a chance to put give him a situation where he could potentially play more to his strengths. Is all that's we're all, saying. That's all we're and saying. If you want to know, and you agreed you to know what, you agreed to that. Three, well, he, had three, he, had one. he had it last night. 40, 40 pass opportunities. That's not what we're saying, dude. That's no, not what saying, we're saying. Get it through your mind. I'm saying God's just saying. give him that opportunity. Jesus Christ. He had the opportunity. You guys are saying give him the opportunity. He had the opportunity last night. No, he didn't. He had the opportunity because he was yeah, down immediately. He was Sam. chasing the game. He's, he was he's chasing the game, though, because they were running. Offense. They were running it first. The times when he has higher pass attempts, are when they get down two or three touchdowns immediately because they think the way to win when the score is close is to do this stupid ass running stuff, right? That's what we're saying. He's when you're chasing the game, anyone's going to have a bunch of pass attempts. On average, as Simmons has indicated to you, three thirty-one divided by fourteen. While you guys were going back and forth, I divided that on the calculator. It's twenty-three point six passes a game. Okay. On average, he threw 23.6 passes a game last year. That is well below 40, and to Simmons' point, that's not giving him the best chance to succeed. If you think he's just going to be bad regardless, you could be right. We're not saying that it would make him automatically good. What we're saying is if you give him that chance to be good, it's at least going to make – more sense than whatever the hell the Titans are doing now. And ultimately, to bring this back full circle, and then please, God, let us move on, the onus falls on the coach. Even if he's a defensive coach, the, the, the head coach is the administrator of the football team. The head coach, if he's a defensive specialist, does not get to hide behind the fact that he only knows defense when the offense is just spinning its wheels in, in, in mud, right? I mean, that's not how any NFL – franchise operates and so i'm glad that he was you know a special a special golden boy or whatever on the patriots but like he's an nfl coach now and he's a coach for another team and he has not shown any ability to evolve or change anything that his predecessors did and yeah mariota has been through what is it you said two or three coaches three maybe those coaches, coaches were just bad maybe those coaches were bad maybe it's as much about the What's coaches it as it is about Mariota. So that's all we're saying. Now let's, can we no, move to, please Kim, go. I, I can, I can see that he might just, be back. Let's just, like, I, 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 let's just back. agree to disagree. And I will, I will, I will end my part on this note. And we'll say if Bill Belichick ever retires from the Patriots, if for some reason, Josh McDaniels doesn't get the job, my second choice would be Mike Vrabel. That's how much please. I believe in that guy. Please, I would. Well, I now would we love know to go you really, you really. I'm love pushing what? my chips all in on this fella. Mike, Mike, Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel. He was, he was a linebacker for the Patriots. He was, you know, he's won championships. I get your your crush on this guy. I know you have pictures of him 
framed in your room. I, I know you coach, might do some. Man. I think he's might a good coach. He's a he's a player's coach, but but I he's did it. But you, I, you might be looking I, I, through, I like You might be looking through Patriots colored glasses on this issue. That's that's my take. I'm not saying like I know the guy. I'm not saying he's a bad coach. I'm not saying he's a bad coach. What's that, Mikey? Mikey, We called him. I've grown up with him. Like, (laughs) okay, all right. Okay, this is getting kind um, of disturbing. Kind of, you kind of get an attachment to him. So yeah, I'm trying. Not family, Kim. He doesn't. He's not your. He's not your family. Part of my life for uh, what? Two thousand. We're getting to the core of the issue. You know, you might be right about Mariota. Maybe he fizzles out and he's a backup for the rest of his career. We'll never know. But I would like we'll to – I bet he's going to get one more chance. I bet he'll get one more can, chance. Can we? Can I end on Mahomes versus Lamar? Can I just – Yeah, let's talk about that. that and then we should probably uh, so, talk. So, so here's, here's something – So much Titans talk? Oh, my God. Here, here's <laughs> here's something Christ. that struck me watching last week, okay? I think last week – even though Mahomes' career is, is, you know, very young at this point. He's played, what, like 18, 19, 20 games or whatever it is. I think last week is the first time watching him just like that second quarter against the Raiders where he just was shredding the Raiders' defense after they got up early. It was the first time I realized that Mahomes in his career, I really think, is going to be like Russell Wilson in the sense that I honestly don't think it matters who his receivers are. And I do think that when Tyreek Hill comes back, um, they're going to be – obviously, he, that he's going to make them a better team. But I will tell you right now, guys, and this is just a guess, maybe this is kind of a hot take, I think they could – I think Tyreek Hill could sit out the rest of the year and the Chiefs could still go 13-3 and three because I think this is more about Mahomes and that system and – Demarcus Robertson, who's been a thoroughly unremarkable player, you know, he looked like freaking Randy Moss last weekend. And just Mahomes has reached that point already that Russell Wilson did, and it took Russell Wilson a little longer to reach, I would say, where you put three or four guys who are reasonably quick or fast out there, and Mahomes is, you know, you know, if, if your criticism of Mariota is – He's too. He dances around. He gets happy feet. He's not good pocket presence. Mahomes' pocket presence is unbelievably good, and he knows exactly when to let the ball go. And it's essentially, if you can get a little bit open, I will get you the ball. And I just think, I think that that is something that all Chiefs fans and all fans of Mahomes, you know, broadly speaking, should really be looking forward to because I think that. When Tyree Kill moves on and when Kelsey moves on, this guy is just like, it doesn't matter who's playing receiver. He's going to be putting up numbers. And I think we're looking at someone, um, if he stays healthy, right, and if he doesn't kind of lose a passion for the game, a la Andrew Luck, right, I think this is somebody who I'm already comfortable saying has a chance to shatter every passing record that has basically ever been been um, set by Marino, Breeze, Brady, Manning, you name it. I think this guy is that good, and I can't. I know it might sound a little silly to think to say that that was my conclusion after watching them against freaking Oakland, John Gruden and stuff. But that's really how that. Now that I have, um, uh, you know, I will step down now off my soapbox. But I, well, I, I, think, I think this dude is unreal. I, I I love Mahomes. I think he makes some ridiculous throws. Uh, the thing that always bothered me about Mahomes, especially, especially when they're playing the Patriots, is that you'll think he's trapped, that he's going to get sacked, he's surrounded by like two or three guys, and he passes it just as they're collapsing in on him and going to sack him. Like somehow he gets the ball off. And, and I can't, like he did that so many times in the AFC Championship game. Um, that that as uh, as a fan that's going against him, you're like God damn it! Right? Like how is he how is he able to get these throws off? He's really good. I I will um, temper that by saying your prediction that he's already going to be contending or crushing all these football records is a little bit premature. 
it's his second year, man. And he plays. I, I'm, he I'm plays, aware of that. I'm just pretty, saying. I think he plays pretty risky, and he he's going to get hurt if he continues playing the way he does. Well, so it's, he- it's health permitting. It's health permitting. Obviously, if he gets hurt, then then um, I think that would greatly decrease the chances of my prediction coming yeah, to fruition. Like, but he's got to go 19 years or, or 18 years or have like. It's no small. I think if he there. has a if he has a good line, he has he doesn't run a ton. He runs some, but he doesn't run like a ton. And he doesn't run the runs he has are not risky the way that Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson's runs can be sometimes. I think he's 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 a lot more uh discerning when he runs, which is not a criticism of Allen or Lamar, but that's just like he he's just he, he picks his spots where to run. Simmons, your thoughts on the homes. <clears throat> No, I, I, I echo both your sentiments in different ways. But and, and also what you, were, what you were saying about Tyreek, I think that's interesting. And I, I've been my mind has been going there too. Like, could he take like, you know, the Titans receiving core, which we just kind of made fun of <laughs> in, no, in no uncertain terms. Could he take them yeah. and turn them into like, you know, uh, looking like, you know, a bunch of all stars or whatever. Who are pro bowlers? Be a baller with. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, th- I think he could, he could definitely elevate a lesser receiving core for sure. Whoa, 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 the whoa, thing, whoa. The, the thing is not lesser receiving core. You put him with Mahomes. He is a top three wide receiver. Listen, you got, you got like about fifty hills that you are prepared to die on, <laughs> and that's fine. You're, you're like the Napoleon. You're like all Napoleon. Of them are, all, all Napoleon of them are, is trying to conquer a bunch of little villages. Anyways, luckily all uh, of them are unfalsifiable. So um, yeah, 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 I'm good. Well, no, I I get it. Your passion, your passion. I get it. Oh. Uh, in, ter- <laughs> in terms hell. of in terms of uh, we'll see, I think this weekend and this not to be like you know living in the moment too much, but I think this weekend is really important for that theory about the receivers because. The thing with Hill is, you know, he's had some bad drops. I have, I obviously have him in fantasy. I'm a little biased. I had him last year. So you can take these next thoughts with, you know, with however much salt you want to, like, you know, even like a tablespoon if you want. That's fine. But my point is that when, when the bullets start flying, I shouldn't have said that. I don't want to use the war terms. But oh. when the, shit, when the wow. shit hits the flan on Sunday, um, you know, it's going to be a close game. We think it's going to be a good game. Is Demarcus Robinson going to come down with those like clutch catches? Are they going to rise? Are these receivers going to rise up and make some clutch plays? You remember last year, uh, Tyreek had an amazing game against the Ravens. Um, had some really clutch ca- clutch catches. It was incredible. I don't know if those receivers are going to. I mean, I think I trust Sammy Watkins to a certain extent. Trust Travis Kelsey, but I don't. I don't know if somebody like I don't know if Hardman and Robinson are, are going to come through in the clutch like Tyreek would. But yeah. I think if you look season wide, yeah, I, I totally could see him turning a bunch of, you know, uh, you know, a replacement level guys into like elevating them, like, you know, 50% or whatever it would be because guy, I mean, the, just watching those games, the amount of 30 plus yard passes that he completed was astounding. And like, I think there was a stat where he completed uh, passes of 35 yards or more on five straight completions. So in that quarter, like he, it was like 35, 35, 35 touchdown, 35, 35 touchdown, 35. You know what I'm saying? Like it was yeah. like the level of pinpoint accuracy and uh, how he can throw from all these different angles when he's like on the run, standstill. He has like all the throws, but what Cam said about him being a little bit haphazard, being a little bit putting himself into danger sometimes, I think is is accurate. And you know, he's he's super young and he probably feels invincible or whatever. Um and that's understandable. But yeah, I do think he needs to kind of reel that in a little bit. But on the flip side, based on his rushing numbers so far this year, it's a small sample size, he's only rushed the ball twice for one yard both games combined. So I feel like he might be um, taking some advice from folks and not running as much. I mean, he, he, he couldn't, he could end up running more later in the year, but I think he is trying to stay in the pocket more. 
Um, because, I mean, let's be honest, like he has a crazy powerful arm. So if he stays in the pocket long enough, someone's going to get open and he's going to be able to deliver the ball to him. So, no, man, I'm, I'm super excited about this game this weekend. It's Some people are saying it's like already the game of the year. I wouldn't go that far. But um, it has the potential to be for sure. It's going to be great. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you, in terms of the really quick, in it's terms got some of like storylines to it, it really I does. Like that, uh, Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes, passing of the torch, yeah. the, the, the two next great quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah. I, and then, then uh, Baker Mayfield and um, <laughs> and Patty Mahomes when they they go off, like it's going to be fun. Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson, yeah. 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 Yeah, but like, but like, but group. check this. Like, Which, if, by the way, are all in the AFC? Hmm. <laughs> if, if Mahomes, if Mahomes gets, if he averages forty five hundred yards, and let's let's even let's go let's go like conservative, let's say he gets thirty eight touchdowns a year. I think that's point extremely on. conservative. Yeah. Uh, let's, mm-hmm. Okay, let's say forty. Let's say forty. Yep. So forty five hundred yards. Uh, and 40 touchdowns a year. So what's what's the um, passing touchdown record? Let's well, hold see. on. How, how long how long do we think Andy Reid is going to be coaching them? Because Andy Reid, I think, is 61. So it's not like he's a, a spring chicken. Oh, he's a he's a heart attack waiting to happen as well. He, he could die tomorrow. But he really could. I, <laughs> oh my I, God. I, Jesus. I hope he doesn't. I, I, hope, I hope he doesn't. Oh my so, God. But, like, you know, they have a lot of assistant coaches. They're, they're going to have that same system. They're never going to – I mean, you know, they'll, they could even bring back Matt. They can bring back Nagy. You know, they could – They could. you know, they're going to keep running that same system. Yeah. No, I wouldn't I worry about that they're, they're too not much. Gonna, they're not going to put a doofus there. Yeah, they're not going to do, like, the exotic no, run scheme. No, they're not going to do the exotic no, smash mouth. Nobody in, intends in to hire a doofus, but they – They're not going to be that stupid. A lot of doofuses. They're not going to be that stupid to do like run first, like they're doing Mariota. They didn't never do that. But th- what they're going to—I think it's going to be—it could be a lot like like you know, Dungey going from Dungey to Caldwell, and like Peyton Manning is still good, right? Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl with uh, yeah. Dungey, and then he's made it a uh, made a Super Bowl with Jim Caldwell. So I think it's—I well, think he's good enough that he's coach coach proof in, in a sense. So Peyton, Peyton Manning has the record: five hundred and thirty-nine pass passing touchdowns. Okay. So, yep. and Breeze oh, yeah. has the passing yardage record. Come on. Hey, can so, we just put that on hold for a second? Because Tom Brady, and with Breeze out of the picture now, Tom Brady's about to beat that record. Yeah, but he's going to be out for like six games. So when all the celebration happens and like the first one to beat Brady's record or uh, Manning's record, and let's get 100 cameras on here and ask how everybody feels. Tom Brady, give me your feelings <laughs> for breaking – uh such a hollow. Okay, keep uh, keep reading this. Back. Hollow oh, record. Well, well, it's going to be in Foxborough or wherever. I was going to. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, hopefully that doesn't happen for everyone's sake, but it, it probably will. And, and you'll you'll throw a little Sorry. party, and Mike Vrabel will be there, and but it, you guys but, but, yeah, each other yeah, off. But in the meantime, um, <laughs> if, if if Mahomes throws forty touchdown passes a year, to to equal what Peyton Manning's sitting at right now, five hundred and thirty nine. We're looking at about 13 and a half seasons. That's a lot. Yep. The, no, so, no, I know. So I, I'm still, I don't know, man. I'm like 50, 50 on whether he can get there, but mm-hmm. I think he can, if he, if, it, it does matter with the health, but yeah, man, if he, look, okay, that's 13 and a half seasons, 40 touchdown passes a year. So if he plays 18 seasons or 17 seasons, it's almost a lock, you know, I don't know. Yep. Weren't they saying like, say. Back in like ninety one or ninety two, they were looking at King Griffey Jr. and being like doing all the numbers and going forward with him. They're like, oh, you know, at this pace, you know, he's going to beat Babe Ruth or Hank Aaron's record in you know two thousand two. You know, like Tiger it, Woods. It, Tiger Woods. Yeah, you know, hey, life happens, um, and it's a lot harder than you think to, yeah. to stay that relevant. For a decade plus, not so, saying. I mean, if anybody can do it, you know, Pat Mahomes can. But I mean, what you're saying is that not assume that he's going to do that. Mahomes also needs... keep in mind that most of his career, if he stays healthy, most of his career will be played without the Patriots dynasty being at its peak. Just throwing that out there. No, yeah. good point. I know. Good so point. that's right because because one of the things I always like to say is that. Oh God. 
if you could describe the Patriots in one term, okay. it's dynasty. It's uh, it's legend yep. blocker. Yep. Yep. Good. Great. You know. So, you, you know, know what? Uh, actually, Simmons, but I, mis- Simmons, I miscalculated. Uh, I miscalculated. Uh-huh. It would actually take him twelve point two two seasons because I I subtracted the fifty he already got. So twelve point two two seasons from this season. So yeah. at forty, yeah. So what do we think he's getting this year? I think he's getting to fifty easily this year. I don't. I mean, 50 I put the over under at forty five. Fifty's a camp, lot. You wanna, camp, you want to bet on fifty? Give me odds. I'm not giving you odds. Okay, straight up. You want to go bet on fifty? Did Pat Mahomes gets fifty touchdowns if he plays all sixteen games? Yes. Done. Ten dollars. PayPal me. <laughs> ten, whoa, whoa, ten dollars. Okay, hold on. Good right, lord, man, like, give me some time to bucks? give me some time to look at my accounts. For God's sake, ten dollars. I mean, hey, I don't know. You're always late paying your your dues. You're always giving <laughs> some poor excuse of why you can't. Oh Ooh, yeah. Can't. Well, that's interesting because I was I'm I'm collecting the dues this year, so I I wasn't late. So, um, but okay. I was glad that you. It was good that we got all the the dues on time, even though I didn't implement a July fourth deadline for no reason. Uh, now Simmons, yeah, back to you your point. You had guys like me um, who had every reason Simmons, to stiff you. Simmons, back to your back to your point. I think where the way you framed it is a good way of putting it. I think broadly speaking, is what I'm getting at. When he's in the AFC Championship game, or he's playing at Gillette, or he's playing at the Chargers, you know, at the Texans, whomever, at the Browns, if the Browns ascend to these heights that they're supposedly going to reach, I think that Tyree Kill. And Kelsey are huge. Like those situations, for sure, he needs them. I'm speaking more like over the course of a season, like you're saying, where it's like in any yeah. given average game, it can just you know just put three or four dudes out there, and he's just good enough that he's going to find them and going to put up stats. I'm a, yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, I'm excited for this game. I want to see. I'm going to be watching Demarcus Robinson, who I actually looked at and thought about picking up and didn't pick up. And instead, I picked up Danny Amendola or whoever the hell I picked up at, at that time. But um, no, man, I I, I want to see I want to see these like uh, kind of replacement level wide receivers how they'll fare in this game because it's it's a hell of a defense, man. The Ravens' yep. defense is legit. I want to see how Although Lamar Kyler, Lamar Kyler did well against them last year. That's a good point. Them last week, didn't he? That's a good point. Yeah, I was. I, I mean, was I'm not. I, by that. You know, I love I love Lamar. Nobody loves Lamar more than I do. But mm. is there a chance? Uh, you might, Simmons. Sorry, we're probably neck and neck there. But like, is there a chance? Is there a chance that this game gets away from the Ravens? Like yeah. the Chiefs oh, win, yeah. like like thirty-eight to seventeen. I mean, honestly, the way it's being hyped up, it probably will happen. I think, that, but I think it's either going to be thirty-eight seventeen Chiefs or like 31, 35-31. Yeah, thirty-five yeah. thirty-one Ravens. Yeah. Oh, you think the Ravens this will be in 35-21? I think, I think if the think if Kansas City wins, they'll blow oh. them out. Yeah. Well, this but is the I, game I last year, Baltimore if I'm not wins, mistaken. Close. Didn't didn't Baltimore almost win this game last year, and then Mahomes had to convert that insane fourth down to Hill? Wasn't yeah. that this game? I think it was. Yeah, that was. It was 27-24. Um, that was a like, so like many- on. On his MVP reel, that might be play number one, that play from last year. It was crazy. And Hill was, like, limping around and shit. It was – Yeah, and, like, running in multiple directions on the route, like running, like, <laughs> across the field in one way and then back across the other way. It was a crazy um, – this this game should be on at night. It's a damn shame. It's just a – it's just a – it's – it's. I mean, you know, I think the AFC as a conference is is pretty bad. I think it's pretty rough. But – the handful of teams who are good, right? Especially the teams who have these young quarterbacks. I mean, there's no denying, and I have never denied this that like that that core of talent is fun and it's going to be fun. Now it's also going to be really easy for them to all make the playoffs because the teams below them may have are garbage. But like, yeah, I mean, sign me up for every year. Like, I think this year I, I was looking at the schedule and Lamar and and Watson. And Mahomes are all playing like a round robin, and then Mayfield is also playing. I think two of those three, you know, 
And I mean, if these guys can all stay healthy and can continue to improve, then that that bodes really well for um, for the the kind of next ten or twelve years for the conference because you know there was definitely that time as Manning and Brady and Roethlisberger and you know I would even throw you know Phil Rivers in there uh, as they were kind of like aging into their thirties where people were like okay well yeah what's going to happen when they decline and I think these guys who have who have come up in the last two or three years. I mean, you know, are they going to be as accomplished as Brady and Manning? You know, too early to say. Probably, you know, there's a chance that, that they're not, obviously. But I do think that these next 10 or 12 or 14 years are going to be um, just as fun if these guys are all healthy. It's, they're going to be just as fun, if not more fun, than these AFC QB rivalries have been since from like 2003 or four to, to now. Yeah, uh, and I think it's funny if you when you look at the history, like it, it kind of goes like a, a, a seesaw to where early two thousands it was the AFC was dominant um, with as far as QB play goes, and was just the more impressive conference in general until you started having you know Peyton Manning um, retire or you know. Uh, all the draft picks and new draft capitals going towards the NFC. And now they're becoming good as all, all the AFC old guard is retiring and now, but now they're getting fresh blood in. So it's kind of, it's kind of going back and forth here. I think you're, you're going to see it tilting towards the AFC um, for the next, next few years that that's going to be the quarterback conference. And, uh, but the, the NFC isn't lacking for young QB talent. I mean, Mitch Trubisky, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jameis that, Winston. Um. Oh yeah. Yeah. Another failure there. No, but 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 in ser- in all seriousness, I think like Dak and Win. Like the play that. By the way, can we just quickly the play that Carson Wentz made last week against the Falcons? Did you guys see that? Where he's falling down incredible. and throws it. Yeah. To uh, yeah, Holland I mean, or whatever his name is. Wentz, Wentz is Wentz is an incredible quarterback and. Kemp, you should be ashamed. You should have to wash your mouth mouth out with soap that you ever said he and Foles were on the same level. That was an absurd, idiotic oh. statement by you. And so oh, you're right, Wentz, you're right, Brady. You're, you're actually right. I apologize. Nick Foles has a statue of him in front of uh, <laughs> in front of the link. So yeah, they are oh, on the same level. Um, Carson Wentz Brady has to with walk you. past that yeah. statue every day. Every day he has to walk your, your past dog, dog and disagrees. think of himself as the lesser QB. I hope that motivates him, but yeah. Your dog we'll your dog thinks you're wrong. But no, I mean you've got Dak and Wentz and you've got um you know someone like Russell Wilson still relatively young. I'm not super young, obviously, but Kyler Murray, He's Garoppolo who was good, right? Um you know, so so the oh. NFC is not lacking for exciting young quarterback but yeah i mean i don't I, no one's gonna argue that they're quite on the level dyna- in terms of being dynamic as the top young quarterbacks in the afc i don't think there's any doubt about that yeah i mean the, the nfc's got some some good qbs but uh i, I just i see it tilting towards because cam newton's hurt drew Brees, you know is hurt um yeah uh and, and he who knows what he's doing next year so you're, so you're seeing him the old guard over there is starting to retire too, but all the dr- the draft capital for QBs is going towards the AFC. I don't know. I mean, well, well the, it's not, the it's NFC, not that they're lacking for talent, but uh, I just, I just, I see the future. The NFC does have really years. good depth, though. The NFC's depth is good, and they showed that last week when you know the Lions beat the Chargers, the Cardinals played the Ravens tough, the Seahawks beat the Steelers, the Niners destroyed the Bengals. Gardner Minshew, man. The NFC has more depth. Oh, the Niners, the, the running, the running game. Uh, all, all right, yeah. You guys do have the Bengals. Do you have Bengals running? The Bengals rush, rush defense, though. It's not good. You guys think that Debo Samuel is going to do anything to warrant getting into my starting lineup? I, I, I really don't know. I, I, I liked him coming out of South Carolina, but um, I liked him too. I'm mad I dropped him. I like him, but he's I got like, like, they like, got like two guys like coming Paris back from Campbell injury a little bit more. 
They've got two guys coming back from injury. They got Jalen Hurd and Yeah. Uh, Trent who, Taylor. Who else? Trent Taylor. Taylor so Trent Taylor. We'll see what I happens. Mean, I mean, I like how they used him last week though. That was awesome. The whole no, it was. Pettis. He, What's up yeah, with Dante Pettis? Pettis, was, Pettis dude, like, yeah. like, that is not that he is was not, supposed to be that, that, getting all this hype last year. I, I think Shanahan that. just doesn't like this doesn't like the way he looks. He doesn't like his face. Yeah, yeah it, Christopher it, it Harris not, loved uh, Dante. Dante. It Pettis. is not going according to plan for for Dante Pettis. Yeah, I didn't think it was this bad. I think, uh, but it's but, a personal yeah. vendetta. Chris, Christopher Harris. Christopher Harris is wrong a lot of the time, but he's the smartest guy in the room, so he's always going to tell you there's a reason why he was wrong, which is interesting because that kind of sounds like someone on this podcast that I've come, kind of, you know, conversed with from time to time. Well, is there an insinuation? I, yeah, I, at least, I, I at least tell you, hey, look, I'm leaving the window open that, hey, I'm not perfect. I can be wrong. Not, I mean, usually I'm right, but whatever, you know? Uh-huh. I can't help oh. that. We'll find out about this page, the Patriots team. I'm, I'm, I think they, I think sixteen and zero is still possible with their with their roster as constructed. But yeah. like, what if they get Jalen? What if they, in their schedule, schedule? Yeah, in their schedule. What? What if they get Jalen Ramsey though? What if they get like another piece? I don't think they need Jalen Ramsey. To, I, I, I don't see them trading. Again, I've been wrong with when it comes to every Bill team. Belichick, every I'm team could to, use Jalen Ramsey though. Like nobody would turn him down. He's too good. No, I agree. Is, but, is, but is this I, a contract here for him? No, no. Is it? Okay. No. I think he's got well, one more. I think he's on his fourth year, and he's got a fifth year option. It might be a good time to get him then. Well, I mean, but they are the Patriots are loaded at in the secondary. They've got like they've got the number one rated cornerback. Uh, per. Pro Football Focus. Uh, I think uh, Jason McCourty's like seventh, and, and Stephon Gilmore's like third. Like they've got an incredible secondary. Yeah, they, they do. could use they do. Jalen Ramsey, but it's, they don't uh, like I, to give up two first rounders. Is that what they're? Yeah, that's what, that's what. That's I would rather for, use yeah. a first round pick to get Trent Williams from Washington because if yeah. you think is there a about chance, it, is there a chance that Gardner Minshew? Can go in and give like a Bill Pullman from Independence Day speech to to Ramsey to stay. <laughs> I think he's going to man. I think he's going to stay. Well, the, now they're, the now owner, they're the that. owner of the Jaguars wants Ramsey to stay. So uh, yeah, yeah, we're going back. We're full circle to Shad Khan. So Shad Gardner Minshew goes in there. He says, he says, uh, he says, hey, 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 Jalen. I heard you uh, listen. I know, I know you've had, your, I know we've had our issues, but listen, I want you to know, uh, Nick Foles is, uh, he's gone, okay, and I, I'm the sheriff now. Nick Foles is never gonna play again, you know. He's, uh, is this, a, is this a Mississippi accent? What? Is this your Mississippi no, this accent? Is, this is, yeah, this is my general kind of Mississippi, <laughs> Southern Gulf Coast accent, right? And so, Jalen, you got to stay with us, and you got to fight in those trenches, okay? Because I will lead us. I will lead us to the wild card, but you have to believe in me, Jalen. You can't worry about Doug Marone. He's not that bright. I get it. I'm going to help you, okay? Now, and then Jalen Ramsey will say, sure. You see, now that that's more of a Florida panhandle accent. What you really <laughs> want is that old Savannah accent. No, he's not from Savannah. We talked about he's from Mississippi. Molasses. You're 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 parroting Andy Bernard now. <laughs> you're just you're just saying like you just wanted an excuse to use that accent, Cam. Oh, it was perfect. It was perfect because this accent you that's was what Andy, was That's awful. what Andy Bernard says, right? I know. Yeah. More, you just want to let it flow out your mouth like molasses. <laughs> but that's not how people from Mississippi talk, is it? Oh yeah. I I I'm I'm married to someone who lived in Jackson, Mississippi. I know you went to school there. I'm married. To someone who lived in Jackson, Mississippi, for several years, and oh, how many years? Uh, several. <laughs> uh, I, need, I need the exact number. More. Then I can. Oh, I'm not. You're she's... not going to get the. You're not going to get the exact then number. I can but anyway, if she the is, point is, the point is, you know, sm- is that, uh, intelligible enough to speak on these matters. The point is, is that Gardner Minshew does not speak like Leonardo DiCaprio's character in Django Unchained, which is how you <laughs> want him to talk. Okay. 
<laughs> Candyland. It was a Mr. Candy. Oh man, John Candy. No, not John Candy. What a villain! I oh, love John Candy. Not John Candy has not been with us for a while, Kemp. I know. I, know. I forget his. I forget his first name. But um, uh, <laughs> I love that movie. That movie is awesome. We should really Great. do. We should really do a Quentin Tarantino um, podcast where we rate his movies. And I cannot believe. Neither of you have seen Inglorious Bastards. Shame on both of you. Yeah, I got to see that. I'm, I might watch that this weekend. Actually, I, yeah, I've been. Right. Uh, it's been on my you're list. Right. We can, for we a can while. have a watch party right after we have our Bengals Dolphins watch party. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Done. Oh man. God, I can't wait for that game. I'm so excited. <laughs> Let's. Brilliant. We should hype it up wait. as though it's like on the level of Ravens Chiefs this weekend, or Chiefs Pats, or or like yeah. you know when the Packers are going to go play at Dallas. What like, we'll the, do, what we'll do a big hype thing with Dolphins. We'll, we'll do like a big theme song, like a big hype what theme song. What time is the game. game coming on? The Chiefs. It's oh, early. I think it's on think one. It's a, one. Early yeah. game, yeah. Oh, uh, man, I'm probably not going to get it. See, well, you could thing. probably do a, uh, you could probably do like a trial with Swain. Well, that, that's <laughs> the thing about game day, man. It's so like. It's football on ADD, which I guess is okay, but uh, you know, it's just like it's going Perfect to one for you. together. You're talking about red. You said you mean red zone. Where I say, yeah, the game, game day. day, red zone, red zone, yeah. It like goes from one, and you're like, okay, I, I'm watching, I'm watching, and then it goes to another. It goes to another game. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I love it. It's I a, it. it's a an excitement heat seeker. Oh my my uh my son loves it. Hudson loves it. My my nephew. I'm like, so do you like it this way or the old way where it's just one game uh, this way? We definitely like it this way. I'm like, of course you do. I mean, if you don't like missing three-yard runs between the 20 and 20-yard 20 lines, then, yeah, it's not for you. But if you like the stuff that cherry picks the good parts of football, then I support Red Zone. I do too. Yeah, I mean, Red so, Zone 2020. So I, I actually I got it I got it for uh, last week and now I'm getting it for this week and I'm like oh, man I don't know if it's worth. <laughs> Wait you you just get it week to week? And then I get out and then I create another email. <laughs> oh my god! And, no I'm just kidding. Wow. Oh my come god! On. Come on! Look, I'm gonna send this to tape to Sling TV. You're, you're, you are talking to Costan- one Costanza of the most... level. Yeah. Costanza. <laughs> Costanza. <laughs> it's definitely not me. I'd like to return this book. I got seven Um, accounts, Jerry. Seven accounts. (laughs) Don't never get me. Don't never get me, Jerry. I I I am paying the thirty five dollars a month or whatever, which means I don't get ESPN. So they're screwing me. Um, Why don't you just do both of them? Get get red and get uh, orange and blue. Get get the bundle. Get the bundle. Just get cable. What do you pay for? Way more. Cable's way more. God, this is how we're ending this. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> my 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 cable situation. Um, Kim, nobody, this is your doing. Nobody's but, listening but, but, to this uh, I, I was I was I was going I was on that little tangent, if you'd excuse me, to to say that um, to, there was a player that I thought was playing that didn't look very good. I forget the player. It's okay. Hey, it's a good time to let, let, let's let's sign off. We've had a we've had a good run yeah. here. Yeah. Now, please. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, hold on. God. This is hold two on. hours. We're we're getting to two hours here. It's it's time. It's time. Now, okay, before we end though, Sam, what do you think about and fans, you guys chime in too. What do you think about a podcast with just you and me? <laughs> you know, I'm well, saying, not, 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 ben, really not that you're not wanted, but when decide. when you are unavailable. Sam, I think me and you should chop it up. You know, yeah. Chris, I, do it. I, I think that the, I think that the people who can give you feedback on that. I mean, ideally, I think it's, we it's want perfect. Fruit. It's perfect. I mean, it's, there's the, it's perfect. Hold on, three point triangle, like that's the strongest structure. That's what we want. But Ben, when you're not there, it's it's Sam, too I think perfect. We need to go duos. It's it's too perfect that you're asking this question at the end of this particular episode because <laughs> listeners will have li- heard you for an hour plus and you just imagine what it's like if I have no cover 
I mean, you go off and on I'm, these I'm tangents forced to that speak. you just go. I'm forced to speak with you with no with no buffer zone uh, for an yeah, hour. Yeah, it's just or more. wit on wit. It's just wit on wit. I just mono imagine. Mono. I don't think that's what, what to anyone hide. would call it. Nowhere to hide. You got. You've got to come up to. I think our. Um, I think our your right counterpoints. Tomatoes. You have got to face my counterpoints like a fucking oh, man. I think our our rotten tomatoes can't hide be behind Ben Remarkably, all the time. remarkably low. I think we'd get like hide behind under twenty percent. All right, I'm sorry. Do if I? he can't be there, you've got you have no one to protect you. Just... Uh, that's not true. Sam Sam protects himself. Uh, I mean, I feel like I'm. I'm feel like I'm. Uh... I protect you, Kemp. I, I'm your buffer. <laughs> you you um, need me more than Sam needs me. Trust me. If you. If you were a Game of Thrones character, I'm totally you joking. Be, by the way, I don't. No one needs. You'd me. be Samuel Tarly, Sam. Wow. I, I don't. I don't watch Game of Thrones. That is a I get, slap I get across that the was, face. That was that was a made slow it down. Sam, I just Sam, dished you. Sam is really okay. that that character is also also like one of the smartest characters in the. In the well, we're not talking game. about that, of course. So you you kind of just Tarly. If we're talking about smarts, you kind of played yourself. No, that, he, well, yeah. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have said Samwell if we were talking about smarts. We were talking about just general, you know, manness. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Chris, he, have you ever considered? Have you ever considered that? Um, when Simmons and I happen to agree on things, it might just be that we happen to agree on them because we've like looked at, looked them over and reached the same conclusion. Not that we're hiding behind one another. I think, and, and Ben, correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, but I think what Ben's doing, I hate to be the one to break this. I think what he's doing is actually patronizing you. What? I think he's actually patronizing you. He really, oh he me a whole this, heck of a lot kind more. Of I feel Kim, like I, kind I agree of... with you plenty. I don't know. I think you kind of block those. You block those instances out, <laughs> and you focus on the times when I agree oh, with Sam. God. But I, I, uh, especially through on on the podcast and through our texts. I mean, I agree with you all the time. I'm always. I'm always chiming in saying, well, hold on. Kim's not completely crazy, guys. Stop, 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 you know, <laughs> embarrassing Kim. Stop humiliating stop him. Stop pointing guys. and laughing at him. Listen. Well, it's, not, it's not like that. It's not like Kim, that. Yeah, Kim, yeah, his underwear got pulled over his shorts, and now it's over his face, and people are laughing. But don't stop laughing at him. No. Look, Kim, I, I, Kim I, I, you have a lot to offer, Kim, sir. Everybody knows that. But, you know, sometimes it's fun to – you know, embrace debate, not to well, use that, that I, phrase, but you know, I, I think you, you, I think you, like you would do an excellent solo pod, Chris. I think it would just be just you, and maybe yeah. it could be like a an old, like a Stephen versus Stephen situation from the old Daily Show, but it's like you're both Stevens, right? Like Chris versus Chris, and you kind of inhabit two different alter egos with various, um, you know, varying levels of praise for. The same yeah. three or four players that you tend no, to bring I, up, Kemp. You do need to start your own podcast, Kemp. Listen to me, Kemp. Okay. You you, you need to start. Great. You you need an outlet. You 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 always have these body, rants. You, body, you need to... stats. Body. <laughs> no, 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 body stats. Audio podcast. <laughs> I like that. And then I would have on as a guest on the show, Sam Abramson. <laughs> It, yeah, it'll I mean, sort I, of be like it'll I'm sort sure of be that. like Michael Scott Paper Company. Speaking of The Office, like when well, Michael Scott Paper Company came yeah, against Thunder Mifflin, you could just rant. You could, you could be like you know like a uh, Sean Hannity type. You just rant and rant and rant. <laughs> nobody would be there to dispel dispel your theories or takes, like, and nobody would, and it wouldn't get you mad because you would just be able to go on and on and on, and nobody would be there to say that you're wrong about anything. Doesn't well, that sound amazing? Right. I would be Johnny Carson to Sam's Ed McMahon, let's say. Wow. <laughs> and, and you would be there. Oh, you yeah. are you are such a peacock. You would be there to it. agree with me, Sam. Um uh, well, I can imagine no no greater hell that I could be thrust into in podcast sense than to be well, the be Ed fun. McMahon to your Johnny Carson. I think, I think it would be fun and I think <laughs> I think you owe it to yourself to give it a try. Well, Kim, why don't you why don't you uh, put your money where your mouth is and pay the hundred bucks for a 
for a podcast um, hosting service and and start your own podcast, man. I mean, I, I would be a guest on the Gaudy Chats, the Gaudy Stats podcast. Is what you I'm would be a guest. I'd be like the guest host. So on I'd my on my podcast. On your podcast. <laughs> So I would record everything. I'd so wait, let me get this straight. You're gonna you're gonna insult me. You're gonna say that you should have your own podcast. You're gonna do all these things, and then at the very end of everything, you're gonna say you're gonna say, "Oh, I think I should host your podcast." You, and then you would get boop, 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 like views or listens, downloads. It would come in. This is uh, word of this mouth. Is, this is very Kempish. This whole exchange. Very campish. I'm, I'm um, just... Listen, you can always come on. I mean, I just can't. I, I, I'm sorry, I can't tailor my schedule completely around yours. You know, I, I can only I, I can record the pod when I'm available, and you're always welcome to come on. Whenever you're free, obviously. Whenever you're free, but I'm not going to turn the pod over to you. Uh, I, I want to know. I just want to know. Can, can we go back real quick? I want to know, Chris. Do you think when podcasts get a lot of views, it's like a it's like a 19 19- 40s newsroom and they start coming in and just like beeping a lot well it's no, like I a think he's saying it's like morse code i think actually that's what he's saying it's like it's like a um uh, you know when when you get a new uh a new person watching you get ding, new person kind of like when you you're going through the ticket line and you go through that wheel and it goes you do one one up you know another person is it because you're so you're so charismatic? You're so you're just such a great presenter and a great host. You said so many great opinions. Is that is that what you're trying to say, Kim? I think I'm no no better, no worse than everybody else. All right. Um, I just think it's the I, disease of me. That's what we're having right now. It's like what Pat Riley said when the the Lakers won their championships. Everybody in the team started to be like, "What about me? What about me? I should I should have my own team. I should be the number one on my own team." Well, Kim. You know what? what? If you if you want to be uh, Byron Scott and you want to go be the number one on another team, you're more than welcome to, my friend. Look, start look, your own yeah. podcast. If you're like start, you're, you're like a, a, I have a five and five. Uh, the temp hour, and you just you're rant like about with all your you're opinions. Like cool. you're like you're like cool. like since minute than the one, since I've been alive, it's that look, guys. Egos have no amigos. You got to <laughs> check yourself. That's pretty good. All right, because I keep that. Simmons, shit. this sounds like uh, this sounds like ben, a Ben Golliver saying. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's, the the point is, is I, I check all oh, that shit before, man. When I come in, I'm ready to work. I'm ready to lay it down. Well, this is just oh, for God. fun. If you if oh, you do if you do want to nope. like take it to the next level, um, you should. I, I mean this sincerely, Kemp. I feel like you do. You know, you have a gift to gab. I've compared you to Sean Hannity. Um, that's that's not very nice, but you yeah. do you just want to you want to talk. No, you it's accurate sit, though. It's accurate. You want you want you want to you know go through your sophistry and say your say your points, and you want nobody else to contradict you, and you just want to rant and rant and rant, and that's why you should have your own podcast because then you'd be able to do that. You'd be able to do that as much as you want. I like to have the, I like to have an open forum so everybody gets a chance, and I don't like to interrupt. Um, but but it keeps I will changing that, what you that, like, what you want. I, I I will say this that I think yeah, you know, obviously if I could find something where three things attached, I would, but I can only think of an item that's two. But I'm thinking of uh Aladdin where uh they had those two parts of the scarab and they needed to put them both together in order for the cave of wonders to come up. That's like what? me and you, Sam. What what the Jamar needed the two scarabs, the two scarab pieces, and he put them together, and that tiger came out, and it's the Cave of Wonders. Don't you remember your goddamn Aladdin? Kemp, all I can <laughs> tell like you is that you put Sting, us Sting wanted to Sting, a podcast Sting, of wonder. Sting wanted to leave the police, and then he made Fields of Gold, and it fucking sucked. And before mm. that, he made Synchronicity. Now, in this case, you're not Sting. You're more like Stuart Copeland or the other one, but just remember what happened when Sting left the police. No, no, no. I, 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 I that's what Kemp, I, all I can say is I'm so glad. I'm so what glad that I extended an olive branch to you way back when when I asked you to be on the podcast. Yeah. I was trying to be. I was trying to be nice. You're my friend, and now it's come to this. Now 
You're what? selfishly lashing out, saying what? you want your own podcast. No, no. You want it to be all about you. Podcast. But guess I, podcast. I'm astonished, but I cannot say I'm surprised. That's a guest podcast. It's like the think of me as like a, the the NWO and WCW. Yep. Yeah, Kim, like, I bet you won't start your own podcast. I bet you can't even you can't even host a podcast. I bet it won't be good. You won't do it. Audio stats audio podcast. You won't I, do it. I need a guest host. Are you going to be my guest host? Kemp, if you build it, they will come. That's all I'm going to say. That is all I'm, I'm saying. If you so get me on. I, I tell you're you, you're on I, right now. I know, and I'm gonna I'm gonna release another audio. It's gonna be it's gonna be me and Sam. Uh, <laughs> jab, jab, and I will send it to you. And I'll say, all right, post it in twelve hours. Thanks. See, see this the the demands. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know. If, I don't know. If I'm just joking, dude. I am just joking. I I am not that callous. I mean. I, I, I don't know, know what to believe. You, you're on. You keep contradicting yourself like every minute here. So I'm not sure what to believe. But you know, you know, me, ben, you know me. How long have we been best friends? <laughs> you you're alter. You're alternating between sincerity, <laughs> joking, no, and, no, 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 and complete joking. absurdity. You're having trouble keeping up. No, this is me sincere. The joking me was, uh, you know, asking you to do all this work for when you were talking time. about Mike Rabel. No, that's no, that is dead serious. I, I am being dead serious on that. But uh, well, Camp, I'll say this. How about this? Okay, you record a solo podcast by yourself, and then send it to me. I'll listen to it, and right. I might release it on Gotti's Test. Yeah, I've, I've offered to do idea. that, but I've offered to do that before, and you claim that you tried to do it. And I did. It, I did out- it was just a. a a lambasting of Aaron Rodgers, who I love, by the way, but just a total. See, just, this is this is the problem. You're gonna have to hone this, Kim, because what? you're gonna have to hone your persona here because you you have to be more decisive. If you're gonna be like a Sean Hannity. You got to really sell it when you really have an opinion. You can't keep you can't keep like measuring it and be like, well, I actually like him, but no, I hate him. But I like you got to come out and just be to, decisive. Well, I mean, you need some new bits. You need some uh, new I, bits. I, you have the same two or three no, bits. No, I, Patriots, I, I, Patriots, I, Patriots. I, I, I ride that fence pretty well. I ride the fence pretty well. Uh, I, and I am. Um, Listen, I, I am very was, good at, at acting like I'm taking a side, but slyly. We're broadcasting to a grand total of uh, nine people right now. So this is a, this is a good training ground. Uh, so, yeah, record yourself. You know, get comfortable. No, I'm gonna give you, you your favorite pair of pants uh, on. It is called and the Age of Italy. I am actually going to be getting surgery on Friday the fourth, so I'm gonna be out of commission for about two months. Hmm. That's when I'm just gonna good luck on, on the podcast front. Age of Italy. Um, you know, it's about the road to the Renaissance. It's just gonna uh, school you guys up on. The history of the Renaissance. Uh, I, I have written almost a hundred pages, um, and I'm not joking on that. I, I, I took a little hiatus about from a, about a year, um, but I'm going but, back. I'm going back. So on. wait, let me get this straight. Now you don't want to do a, uh, a stats, uh, fantasy football, sports podcast. You want to do Italy that's podcast? The podcast that I'm yeah. working on. That's the podcast I'm going to invest money. In. Okay, so. Y- Oh, I see. So you, you 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 want your own podcast. You're not going to invest any money in it. No, but no, you no, want to be on my podcast whenever you want, and you want to be able to talk all by yourself. I see. Okay. No, 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 I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said, I said, Ben, I prefer all three of us. But in those days where we were like, oh, we can't get everybody. Sam, you're my man. I need you. Yeah, uh, but I'm included right. in everybody, right? Like Let's, maybe I can't do it either. This has been a yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It's not just you can't. You're, you've also been the one who said you couldn't do it as well. So uh, you're all over the place. But it's no, been a I'm pleasure. Saying, no, but I'm saying, I'm saying, there's a, a lot pleasure. of time doing it. And then What's I'm like, oh, hey, Sam, how about we just do a podcast? Well, yeah. Well, well. That's what I'm saying. If you if you want it again, like I I gave you this opportunity many months ago, and you said well, no, it's not going to work. So hey, I, I'm down to record a podcast. I did record a podcast. In fact, I probably I might still have it. Um, just just a year old, no big deal. Yeah, just a year old. <laughs> year old. Hunter. 
<laughs> I'm sure it ages. I'm sure it's aged well. No, yeah. I mean, you know, well, Kemp, Kemp having the ability to podcast on Italy, the Renaissance, and on fantasy football, you know, it's it's kind of like how, you know, uh, Kanye makes music and he also designs clothes, right? I mean, he can do more than one thing. Yeah, I mean, why don't you just do two podcasts, man? <laughs> It's not that hard. You just, I think you should. I think you should. You should alternate within the same, within the same show, though. Like, give ten minutes on, on Garoppolo, you know, Italian last name, and then like ten minutes on like, the David. Just do like a grand in, in like, the, in the Uffizi. Yeah, like grand Colin Cowherd style metaphor that touches on Italy and NFL and Patriots, of course, yeah. and Mike Vrabel. Uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to marry those two topics together because I think there I think there is a market for that for that. Well, basically, yeah. I'll be free after the late games, not this Sunday, but because we've already recorded this. But for the sun, the Sunday's coming up. That, that's that's the slot I'm looking at because you know it's Sunday afternoon. Most people are available, so it's and it's it being my podcast. It's most convenient for me. But yeah, Kim, if you want to record, so that's that's when I'll be looking to record during the football season. But if you want to record your own pocket, you know, do like a, a you know a Kemp rant, you know, it can even be like twenty minutes long. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I can I can release it on Gaudy Stats. I mean, what we've been talking about now is basically unlistenable for anybody who's listening right now. The last like thirty minutes, everybody else, people are like their ears are exploding and their their blood's dripping out of their ears right now. So it, bo- it I mean, bodes well for your podcast. Chris. There's nothing that you could do that could be any worse than what what we've been doing this last this like is, 30 uh, minutes. This is this is behind the scenes. This is how the sausage gets uh, made back here. <laughs> Not really. This is a, <laughs> this is a, we're going through just, the nitty gritty, guys. You're getting an inside look of how this podcast gets developed. I mean, it just doesn't come out of nowhere. We we talk about these ideas. We just wanted to give our fans uh, a peek. Behind. No, you're speaking for us, and that's not that's not really <laughs> what can, can we're I doing. Anyways, something I wanted guys, to bring I got up. I got a roll. I got a roll, but it's been a pleasure as always. Kemp, you bared your soul. I hear you. Why don't you get? <laughs> why don't you uh, put your money where your mouth is? You want you do you know? Cue the montage the music. Cue the montage yeah. music. Start start your podcast. You know workouts, awesome. your practices, and I want to send me a rant, and then Sam and I. Or maybe just me or whatever. We'll listen to it and uh, we'll release it because content is king. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All no, right. I, I like Farewell, that. Farewell, gentlemen. I, Sam, I'll I, text I you to, go. to set up a schedule. Okay. On that. Just remember, Kim, I incur, I, I'm with Simmons to see. Do you, do you nice. need me to chant it? Nice. Uh, see, uh, see, uh, see, right? Go Definitely to see from the podcast. Okay. Yeah. The disease of me. All right. See you guys. Bye. 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 Goodbye.